Well, when gravity I... and beer are useful. Put in beer term. I think at this point he's just. I think at this point he's just addicted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Same. Um. We gotta try and find some place safe on the on the surface first, don't we? That that involves us finding that place. Look, I have no idea what the city even looks like right now. Is so there any way you can get a lay of the land. I mean, I've no. been here a couple times before. Well, a lot of times before, so I might know the general outpost. Hmm. Are you heading up right now? Are you just having a look outside um, of the sewer drain? We're trying to figure out a strategy for what we're going to do once we get up there. That's fair. My, my strategy was walk around and figure something out, but... <laughs> <laughs> my plan was investigate by looking around, because it's hard to investigate by just poking your head out of the sewers. Okay, so do you want me to switch maps? Yeah, in for a penny, in for a pound, we're going up. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Okay. The careful. city surprisingly doesn't smell as bad as you think it would based on what people are saying. The streets are fairly deserted. You pop up probably around here. So there's an inn and an em a currently empty marketplace behind you. You would know that the current day is not the day that markets usually go on. It's usually in about two days. So it's two days until the next market. So you would expect it to be empty. Okay, this doesn't look too bad yet. The inn is currently, it looks to be fairly empty, but that's not surprising considering the fact that the city is so heavily locked down. As far as you can see so far, it's deserted, but fairly reasonably deserted. You'd expect it to be deserted in this sort of time. You mm -hmm. can't see anyone walking around the streets. Can we see the uh, like main castle? The main castle is located over here. There's a fairly large wall around it, and the gates look to be fairly well guarded. You notice quite a few... Uh, what looks like guards just going around the top. If you look a bit closer, you can see that some of them have wands, some of them have crossbows. They're clearly armed and actively defending the castle. Uh, let's see. So which direction are you looking in right now? So you're around here, and you're looking that way. Mm -hmm. At least Taishiro is. Yeah. Yeah, I'm probably looking that way too. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Alright, so in that case, you'll just notice that the guards will be changing shifts. It looks a fair bit like if you've seen the British Royal Guard doing the changing of guard. It kind of looks a lot like that. It's very well organized. They are being very precise and professional with their movements. And they quickly do the switch. And the other guards look like they're going towards the inn. It looks like they're just on their break trying to get food. It doesn't look like they're alerted at this stage. Mm. Interesting. So, hmm, let's see if we can try and... We should try and find this... We should try and find an inn or something. Just a place that we can hide out. For I mean, time being. the inn behind us, dude. You mean the inn right next to you? Oh, yeah, that the guards are about to go into? That in? Okay, let's find a different in that the guards aren't going to be going into. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want to wander around be my guest? I ain't going to stop you. I don't want to wander around in the middle of an evil lair. It's That's scary. Not evil, it's not a lair, and we should be good regardless, so long as we just look around carefully. And not be stupid, like David. <laughs> yes, which means you're following my instructions. Both yeah. of you. Well, mm. I wish we could get a, I wish we could get a better look at the castle. Yeah, I'd rather not suggest the castle right now. I think we should just take a look, lay the land of the city first before we do anything so bold as to charge the stronghold. Uh, what's this? What's that over there? He points over towards that direction. You would be aware that that is the city cemetery. And that's where they they generally have walls around it because they've noticed over the years that sometimes they have a bit of a problem with zombies rising up. In some cases, zombies will rise up due to <coughs> magical interference. 
due to necromancers and such. Sometimes there's also the problem of certain herbs that they might ingest and just not being aware of what those herbs are. Sometimes it can just be some really potent magical energy in a certain area. Either way, they try to be pretty careful and generally they will put a wall around it just to make sure that if there happens to be a zombie outbreak that it doesn't end up causing problems for the rest of the city. Cough, silence, and cough. Yeah, pretty much. These guys are somewhat sensible about a lot of the fairly common issues that happen with, uh, you know, monsters. At least, the people who built the city were. It's just a cemetery. It's walled off like most sane ones are. You really don't want powerful corpses coming back from the dead. I guess that makes sense. So, what is, so what's our plan now? That. Walk around, get the lay of the land, investigate the area. The usual plan for this sort of thing. Okay. Oof. I uh, a bit worried, but... Yeah, well, what's new? I think we should head up that way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Alright, so as you head up that way, you notice that there are a few guards patrolling near there. They just politely nod to you and continue walking around. They don't seem to be paying any particular attention to you. You're just wandering. They're just wandering. Mm. Not generally all that bothered. There's a bit of an empty patch. It looks like for right now at least they since you're in the northern hemisphere it's a bit colder out so you could gather that that was usually where they'd be growing crops around this time. But for right now, it's empty because it's a bit too cold to be growing all that much. Mm, As you weird. go up here, you'll notice another inn. It looks to be a bit smaller, but still a bit more lively. It looks like there's actually some activity in there. As for mm. the other building, it looks to be some kind of campus, some kind of university campus. It doesn't look like it's open at the moment, but it does definitely look like the type of place where there's a large library, there's a stage. You can be fairly certain this is a bard college. Hmm. This... Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! Is this what I think it is? Oh yeah, it is! Let's go check it out. Hmm. <laughs> it's gotta Tyshore be a right just... there. Tyshore is still just standing and staring at the uh, college. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I would not be paying attention, so I'm walking into the inn to go start talking to people. Mm. Oh, Tyshro, moment to shine, I say. Oh my god, oh my god, this is, this is it. Uh, okay, they're not open, they're not open. So cool. Um, okay, let's just... Okay, save the town first, then... Then ask for... Okay, let's go. <laughs> and Tyshro walks into the inn alongside him. Okay. You will notice a fairly uh, fairly burly looking woman who is just standing at the bar. It looks like there's quite a few people in there. It looks like a lot of the people who would normally be in their houses are holed up in here. A lot of them look like they're just trying to entertain themselves, playing various card games. A few of them look like they've gotten into a bit of a bar fight. But, oddly enough, it looks like it's fairly well contained. It looks more like a organized wrestling match than something spur of the moment. Looks like it's actually an organized fighting ring of sorts in the corner of the inn. And the lady just waves at you and says, ah, Good to see you all. Yes, I haven't seen you at this inn before. Mm, we're, uh taking a bit of a trip around town. Of course, of course. My name is Rabina. Nice to meet you. Uh, same to you. Uh, name's Sension. Hello. Hello there. Good to see you all. Would you like to nice grab a drink of something? Something to eat? Uh, maybe later. I'm not hungry right now. My appetite was a little ruined by what I was doing earlier today. Of course, of course. Say, you look like adventurers, yes? Would you like to have a look at the quest board? Fuck it, why not? Yeah. This is a nice bit of an adventurous tavern. Yes, it's it's a good place for people to come to 
let out their frustrations or meet with old colleagues or, well, just simply find a quest. That would explain the Bloodsport ring in the corner. Uh, no one's allowed to kill each other. No, it's just unarmed combat. Just for a bit of entertainment. People bet on it. Is it still Bloodsport if they bleed? They're not generally supposed to bleed that much. <coughs> Any serious injury or knockout and the match is over. Mm, fair. Right, yeah. Let's have a look at this board, shall we? So, you will look up at the board, and it looks to be fairly basic stuff as far as a large city goes. One gentleman's saying that he's looking to get the cemetery cleared out a little bit, says that uh, there have been a couple of zombie uprisings, and that the city guard generally prefer to get adventurers in on that, just because they generally are a bit understaffed in regards to going into the cemetery. So they are looking for qualified adventurers who are experienced with dealing with the undead, or just adventurers who are not likely to get themselves killed because they don't want to worsen the zombie problem. They're also looking for a lost cat, <laughs> because of course they are. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, the lost cat sounds interesting. <laughs> Little kitty's being lost. There's also a bit of a detective work one, where someone's house had been burnt down, and they're suspecting that it was some kind of rival. So they're trying to figure out who burned their house down so that they can exact revenge. There's also a note from what looks to be some dwarf or gnome. You can't quite tell based on the name, but it's definitely something that was written by someone who's very much into metals and very much into technology. They're looking for a they're looking for a shipment of some particularly good um, iron and some pretty good steel, but they need for an adventurer to protect the shipment because it's quite large and it's quite valuable. So they're looking to send the adventurer to go collect the shipment somewhere else, if possible. It's all looking... I'd say that the most recent stuff is probably the cat the tavern and the tavern burning down. The other stuff is a bit older. Right. Um, Not the tavern, the sorry, the house. Yeah. What's the lay on these uh, quests working? Is it the regular rules of whoever completes it first wins, or is it you, call, uh, you get dibs on the quest? Essentially, whoever completes it first gets paid for it. Uh, written here is who set out the quest. So generally what happens is you go meet them first just to make sure the quest is still current, and... Sometimes people are a little bit lax with taking these down, so it's worth seeing the person who set out the quest first. But it should say on there where to find the person, and hopefully how to get started on the quest. Right. So you go in, you meet with the person, double check if they have any adventurers on there. Generally it's the policy that people shouldn't have more than one adventuring party on a quest at a time, just so there aren't any complications with payment. Some people aren't particularly good with them, though. I try to make sure that all of the quests here are reasonably up-to-date and accurate, but some people are not as honest as you'd like with those. So it's definitely that's... worth double-checking. Yeah, that's fair. Um... Hmm. Guys, honestly, the cat one seems like the one that gets us the most movement and the most leeway for walking around aimlessly. Mm. I mean, that's true. Plus, we get to save the kitty. Yes, that's definitely my concern, and not the walking around the city. Uh, <laughs> sweet. Can I have a look at the cat poster? Of course. So, she just pulls the cat poster off the notice board and hands it to you. And, looking at it, you will see that it looks like it was written with whatever the fantasy equivalent of crayon is, it looks like it was just a bit of rough chalk written on a piece of paper. It looks like it was written by a child, but all that it says is, My cat ran away in the middle of the day, and I'm really worried. I, I don't want Mr. Tibbles to get hurt, and my mom's going to be really mad at me. Please help me find Mr. Tibbles. 
Mr. Tibbles is a pure white cat, except for the ears, which are black. Will respond to the name Mr. Tibbles, is fairly small as far as cats go, and really cute. Just call out Mr. Tibbles and offer a little bit of peanut butter. Mr. Tibbles peanut? loves it. Do we have mm. peanut butter in this time period? Peanut butter? <laughs> you have peanuts in this time period, and peanut butter is just made by, well, essentially Wait. just blitzing it. Also, does the time period matter? We still, we're still in a medieval world that also has a literal robot species in space, Carl Elise. No, I guess that's true. Yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> magic. Is it, is, this, also, is it just me or is this child super literate for, for using crayons? Hmm. I mean, I translated this out of scroll. It just says, please find cat, and then it has a picture of it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, so... Well, that makes sense. Uh... Let me double check what skills are connected to uh, your ability to decipher scribble, because you definitely need to rank up in whatever that skill is. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see what that is. I want to see, like, translating toddler. What skill is that? Is that insight? <laughs> Yeah, screw it. Up your skill and insight, because that was impressive. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> just... <laughs> I'm pretty... I have to... Well, I mean, it just, just turns a picture around. It just says, please find my cat, Mr. Tib just Mr. Tibbles. Crayon drawing with the ears and the peanut butter. I think this, that's what the message is, so... <laughs> well, that's why we have you in charge, to decipher child writing. I thought I was in charge by default. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> in charge by default, because you have two children and an idiot. And also a cat, who is somehow the most trustworthy party member. <laughs> yeah, this is the most- so the, the, the one who I can trust the most to be- Uh, Taishiro. No, I, I trust the cat more, because Taishiro is way more likely to be geeking out over something. <laughs> oh, no, no, I was gonna say- sorry, I was gonna say, uh, Taishiro just leans over to- the innkeep, and it's just like, um, that, that building just over the, just over the way, is that the College of Legends? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's currently off for its break, but it's, it will probably be open in a couple of weeks. Uh, awesome. Also, a couple of the primary bards have left just due to the city being locked down. I can't say I know how they left, though, considering how, well, locked down it is. Although... I've heard rumors that a couple of the city's residents have snuck underground, met with some dwarves, found some way to escape. At least they're trying to. Right. Hmm. It's really what difficult to really tell what's going on in these parts. Quite a few people seem to be losing their heads. It may just be because of the combined spaces. Figuratively or literally? Figuratively. They seem to be a lot less sane and right in the head than normal. But no, their heads are still firmly attached. Unless they're zombies being decapitated, but the zombie problem is luckily confined to the graveyard. Right, 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 right. Cool, 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 cool. Um, do you guys have peanut butter out of curiosity? Of course, yes. Do you want it just in a container, or do you want it on something? Uh, container, I guess, because that's more peanut butter. Of course, here you go. And she just passes you what looks like a small bowl with a little lid on top of it that just has some peanut butter in it. It looks like a fairly generous amount. It looks like a couple of tablespoons worth. And she just says, alright, that'll be two copper. Uh, sure. Just throw the cash over. Not a problem. And let me know if you need anything else. Alright? Should be all good. Let's get going. Us, I guess. We don't have a party name. <laughs> alright, best uh. of luck. Probably work out that party name. Um, yeah. Oh, we're off to find the cat. The wonderful cat of something. Haven't got to that part yet. Mm. Not exactly a words, but there are you. Mm. Uh, David, you wouldn't want to me, please. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I've already okay. made that. I've already made that song. It was a little derivative. So maybe that direction, I guess. Uh, hold on a second. What was its name? Uh, Mr. Tibbles. Um, okay. 
And he's just going oh dear! To... Oh, crap! He's going to shout as as loud as he can. Uh, yes, sir. I'm just gonna cut. It's like a second. It's like that. I'm like, oh fuck! Just cut my ears. Uh, so is Mr. Tibbles within two hundred two hundred feet? Does Mr. Tibbles have sensitive ears and want to run away and hide from the extremely loud yelling that you just did? The answer is yes! Mr. Tibbles does have sensitive ears and does want to run away from you screaming! Mr. Tibbles! Uh, you uh, hear probably about seven different cats just yowl and run away into various different alleyways. There aren't even that many alleyways, but all of the cats try and find one. Uh... Stop Bye, that! Bro. Never again! Never ever do that again! What? Uh, I thought it would, thought it would like, cover a lot of ground. Uh, yes! Sorry. I think you- You see a couple of guards who are just on the patrol just rush over and go, Is everything okay? Are you alright? I- Fine. He's just trying to find the cat and apparently has the decibel range of uh, about 18 fireballs going off at once. <sighs> alright. That's good. I'm just glad that you're okay. okay. Do you have any idea where the cat may be? Oh my god. Dude, I think you scared every cat within this half of the city. Uh, apologies, my ears are still ringing a bit. I, there's quite a few cats around this city, quite a few strays. Generally, they try and hide behind uh, any, any businesses that cook food. Generally, any inns, taverns, bakeries, smokehouses, that sort of thing. Most right, of the time, right. they go behind places that serve meat. I mean, that's they're true. cats. They, that's generally where they go if they're not at home. I'm not right. sure where you'd expect to find cats. But kindly, please try not to do that again unless you're in really severe danger, okay? Yeah, touch, Don't want to worry, people. No, no please, God, no. Me. That's okay. okay. Just look after yourselves. We're trying now, to keep this city safe. Yeah. Um, good. All good. Uh, Have a good rest of your day. And the Tashiro. guards will just nod to you and then continue on their patrol. Tashiro, please leave the college for the cat for me and David. Okay. Sorry. Tashiro okay. On the plus side, line. it doesn't look like the guards are particularly bothered by your presence. No. <laughs> oh my Somehow. God. Okay. Yeah, Tashiro will just sulk to the back of the line of three people. Four oh. people? It, don't we have the, um, what's her face? Uh, Val, that was it. Mm. Val is quite... Val is not quite in the line, but she's definitely around. At the moment, it looks like she's just looking down a bunch of alleyways and just scribbling notes. Hmm. Okay. So, white with black ears. Check record. Let's check around the alleyways we just spooked all the cats into first. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so the alleyway will probably be between the College of Legends and the Inn is probably the one that you're closest to right now. So down that one, it looks like there are two cats. Uh, one of them is entirely black. And one of them is mostly black, but with a white tail. It looks like it's a mother and a kitten. And the mother is just looking up at you. And definitely looks like if you mess with it, we'll probably start to get mad. Okay, that's not our cat. Thank you very much for your assistance. I'm just gonna salute the cat and walk away. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> And the cat will just go back behind what looks to be a little dumpster. You'll notice that despite the various... Uh, actually, roll a perception check real quick, since you're not actively looking for this. 21. Okay. 21. Uh, the ghost said that nothing was being allowed out of the city, including, uh, you know, feces. You're not seeing any piles of it around. You don't know where it is. And the city is locked down pretty strictly, but it seems like a lot of the reports that you've seen are relatively inaccurate. Okay, and also, okay. people seem to be a lot happier than would be indicated by the reports that you've already seen. Okay, this is getting more and more fucking weird the second we go on with it. Okay. So, the main alleyways that you're probably going to want to look at 
I've only got major buildings highlighted in here, but there are some more buildings in a lot of the other areas. They're mostly just residential. So I've just, that's just how I've laid out the map. So there are more buildings and alleyways here that are mostly residential, quite close to the house. Mm -hmm. They look to be about as occupied as you'd expect. You know, about half of them are occupied, half of them are not. It's it's midday, so some people are working out of home, some people are having a midday siesta, uh, some people are at their jobs in various places. Oh, uh, by the way, guys, sorry. Hey, hey. Yeah. I should just let you know that at some point later today I'm going to have to head off for a little bit because my mum's coming home today. And well, Yeah, fair. You know. yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'll be back, but at some point I'm going to leave for a little bit. So just. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, understood. Yeah. yeah. So, down the next alleyway, you will notice a tabby cat, which looks to be quite friendly, who will go up and start to cautiously wander up to David. Hmm. Well, well this... Ah, uh, yes, fine cat. I have good drink for Don't good Don't feed the cat beer. Technically, <laughs> not feeding. Are you going to be offering the cat beer? Don't give the cat beer, David. But companion. Don't beer. <laughs> Want a beer? No. Don't beer. I am ordering you not to give the cat beer. <sighs> Sound like David, please do not get the cat drunk. I can assure you cats are crazy enough when they are sober. I do not want to see a drunk cat. Also... Cats require a lot less alcohol to get drunk. You'll probably give it alcohol poisoning and kill it. Let's not kill a cat, okay? Yeah, no worries. They will be like, okay, boss. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Okay, um, keep a looking then. The cat will start to rub its head against... David's leg, and then start to go off in a direction near to the wall. And what you'll notice is a bit of a small hole. It looks like it's large enough for probably someone to crawl through. Uh, someone smaller than David. So Taishiro or Senshin at a pinch could probably do it, as could Gemini. But it looks like there's a small crawl space. It looks to be fairly clean but it looks like it's a bit of a secret passage through the city. And inside, you'll just see the cat has just set up a comfortable-looking place to sit. It looks like just has grabbed a bunch of clothes, a bunch of other stuff to use as a bit of a, well, bit of a nest. But, yeah, you'll notice that there's probably going to be a few more of those around the city. You're not sure what the purpose is, though. Kevin! Are going to find any, any kobolds down there? I don't. Why would you find kobolds under a city like this? I don't know. I read a story ages ago about kobolds living under a city. Okay. Well, still not our cat, so. <sighs> well, let's see. Have we cleared most of this uh, this area yet? By the way. So you've cleared the alleyways here. You've cleared most of the alleyways around this area in the residential section. Uh so. You've checked where this girl lived. That might make the uh, whole figuring out where the cat might be easier. Um, it actually does say on the thing. So, it looks like she lives closer to the other side of the city, around this area in that residential district. So, it looks like the note just has a particular address, which you're not f as familiar with street names, but it does also say uh, near the stables, near the, uh, what's it? Let's see, uh, north western entrance. No, northeastern entrance. Well, northeastern exit near the docks. So, okay, so that's roughly where, yeah, that's roughly where she said that she lived. So, you might be able to have a bit of better luck if you're able to go there. Sweet. Hey guys, we're heading up to the northeast. Okay. Yeah. Let's and get we head over to the northeast and then? Yeah, and investigate, like, doing quick investigations of the uh, alleys okay. along the way, just to check if you can find the cat as we go. Alright. 
So as you go along here, you'll notice that while here was a bit of a uh, housing district, this place is a bit more commercial in nature. You'll notice that there's a blacksmith that is currently working, what looks to be a dwarf and what looks like a young gnome who is just out the front of the blacksmith peddling wares. There looks to be a alchemist and a potion seller who are operating out of the same building but in different sections. So you just see half of the building is devoted to potions, the other half is devoted to potion ingredients. There is a large bookstore. You can't see exactly what's in it. It looks to be a little bit dark, but not dodgy, more homey, I guess. Specifically that sort of candlelit sort of vibe. It's probably got a fair bit of information on the occult just based on what you can see and stereotyping. There looks to be quite a lot of different shops there. There's also a general grocer. So just a lot of generic shops that you'd probably expect to see in this sort of place. Well, not too suspicious so far. Uh, and the cat situation? So far, you don't see any cats here. You do see a couple of stray dogs. Two of them are fighting over what looks like a scrap of bone, but they pretty soon have it broken up when a bigger dog just roughs at them. The bigger dog doesn't take the bone. The bigger dog just tries to get the smaller two to stop fighting over it and then continues to seemingly mind its own business. Tasha and... is going to try and go over and pet the dog. The big dog. Okay. Alright. Uh, roll an animal handling check. Time for Tasha to lose a hand. Uh, animal handling? Don't go anything with it. Okay, let's see what you get. Alright. Well, you probably wouldn't be able to tame the dog off of that, but since you're just petting it, the dog will look up at you, notice that it doesn't look like you're going to hurt it, and then just begrudgingly agrees to be petted, and will then just, yeah, walk off. Just seems to acknowledge the fact that you exist, not get mad at you, but also... You'd probably need to do a bit more if you wanted to make this dog your pet, but since you're just petting it, yeah, that works. <laughs> I've always been, I've always preferred dogs to cats. I wonder why that'd be. Ah. <laughs> You'll Anyways. notice that the shops start to change over from the more well grocery and the more standard ones to a few more of the food-based ones. So it looks like there aren't necessarily many inns over here, but the main thing that's populating this section is what looks like a couple of farmers are selling their wares. Normally they'd be in the markets, but since the markets are closed for, well, until the markets open on specifically the weekend, then they're just sitting there and they're just peddling their wares. There's also a couple of butchers there. One of them looks to be quite reputable, looks like they have quite good quality meats. One of them looks to be down a bit of a shady alleyway. And if you look down that shady alleyway, you'll also notice what looks to be the entrance to a tavern next to something which is only marked by a pitcher of dice. Okay, gambling house it is. Um, and let's check around the back so we can find if there's any aminals. Okay. All right. Am so that mean. <laughs> you will notice that there's a couple of raccoons just scrambling in the trash near the gambling house, and you will also notice a pair of black ears. You don't see the rest of the animal, though, so you're not sure if it's even a cat. But Invest you just notice that, the, and you just see... Are they attached to an animal, or are they just a random pair of ears lying on the ground? <laughs> okay, <laughs> they are attached to an animal. You can assume that because you just see the black ears bobbing up and down, as it looks it's like whatever bad. this animal is is probably eating something, but it's behind a trash can for the most part, so the animal is pretty well obscured. What do the ears look like? They... Uh, let me see. Yeah, they look like cat ears. They look like cat ears. 
Okay, I'm gonna start. Have black ears. Get out. Well, we got the peanut butter, so may as well test. Okay. <laughs> Roll perception. <laughs> Rolling perception. Do, 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 do. 18. Okay. The positioning. They look like cat ears, but they're positioned very weird. And then when the creature lifts its head up, you'll notice a humanoid face. You're pretty sure it's some kind of hybrid creature that looks like they're trying to tame the raccoons. Here. Here, cutie. Here. Here. No, will you be my friend? Oh, come on. You're such cute little trash pandas. Oh, ow! Damn it! Why are you having to do that? Oh. I don't, hey. That's Mr. Tipple somehow. Hello there. Hello? Hi. Hello? I'm trying to make friends with the raccoons. No luck, though. Uh <laughs> I always like to go on little journeys. I hate when they're interrupted, though, and I have to stay in one place for too long. Say, I don't think I've seen any beings like you before. Uh, the, the little one there with the cute little ears. What's your deal? Huh? Hi! Um, hi. My name's Taichiro. I... I'm a gnoll, I think. Oh, nice! I'm a tabaxi. Cat folk. I roll back, you think you're one? Hmm? Well, that's the name. That's what I've always heard everyone saying that I am, so. Hmm? I'm pretty sure. Oh, right. nice! Um. Yeah, I say. So... Yeah, I say cat folk because I have a lot of uh, characteristics in common. I'm one of those uh, hybrid species. I like to go around learning stuff. I would be a bard, yeah. except for the fact that I'm terrible at any kind of performance, so generally I just go around trying to learn stuff. It's kind of fun being a traveler, though. I like it. There's actually a cool bard college nearby that'll be, that'd be really good for someone like that. <sighs> yeah, College of Legends. Uh, as soon as it opens up, I'd definitely love to catch a few classes. I've heard the fees are pretty bad if you're not willing to, well, you know, perform for uh, <laughs> work experience. Well, luckily It's I pretty good for bards, though, because, you know, you can essentially not have to pay a dime as long as you're willing to actually just perform. <laughs> I just can't do it. My singing sounds atrocious. Oh, uh, you don't need to sing. You could always just do it. You could always just do plays. I did a play recently. <laughs> uh, and Taishiro is just going to go go forward and sit cross-legged in front of this tabaxi girl and... Mm. Uh, uh, you might want to be careful of the ground there. There has been a lot of trash dumped here. You probably don't want to sit down. Ah, uh, it makes it more comfy. It's a lot comfier than my old bed used to be. You're gonna make yourself sick. Please don't make yourself sick. <laughs> don't worry, I'm a gnoll. Yeah, there's a lot of sickness running around here. Wait, what kind of sickness? I don't know, but it seems to make people lose their minds a fair bit. I've seen a lot of them trying to storm the castle. They don't seem quite right in the head. They're not zombies, but they definitely don't seem to be all there. It's like they're running around mindless, but they're still alive. It's weird. I think they must have ate something weird. I'm just trying to be careful right now and trying to avoid all of the weirdos. Wait, you mean there's a... There's like a... Plague of insanity going around? Looks like it. At least that's as best as I can gather. I can't tell what's causing it. I don't think anyone really can. Those of us that are still sane are just trying to get around with our normal lives. I mean, <laughs> ideally I'd like to go on with my normal life and go traveling around a bit more. I hate being cooped up in one place for too long. Mm. Yeah, I can, I can understand that. I was... Mm. I mean, ever since I was... Um, well, I'm not sure if it was ever since I was born, but ever since I can remember, I was in... I was entirely in the same bar. So. Mm. Wow. That does not sound fun. Having to stay in one place for so long. <laughs> Gives me the heebie-jeebies. It's at least a nice place. So wait, you said that there's You were in a basement. I mean... You were in a basement? Another... That's so small. Oh my goodness, you poor thing. Is this your yeah, first time I mean... outside? Um, yeah, well... Recently, the place burnt down. I had a lot of company, though, so I was I was all right in the basement. Oh, you poor kid! I'm so sorry um, to hear that. No, it's it's okay. That's over. That's all in the past now. 
Yep, mm. and the boss who did it is dead and buried in several different places. Mm. Well, we threw him in a well. Okay. I threw, most of it, I threw most of it in a well. I threw some of it into a hole and it set it on fire. Wow, so, you sound like interesting people. It's not very often that I get to, well, I mean, obviously I get to meet bards pretty regularly because I like to in-hop, you know, just traveling, doing a lot of different work so that I can find stuff. Did you know, the other day, I managed to get my hands on this really fancy looking diamond. I traded it for passage to this island so that I could learn a bit more about this bard college. Ah, uh, it's always fun going around and just trying stuff. This world is so beautiful. Fair. Hmm. I mean, I've done my fair share of traveling around this local peninsula, but I ain't gone much further past it. At least mm. I wasn't supposed to until I was older. Mm. That makes sense. Oh, should... oh. If you like hearing about stories, you'd totally love this guy's story. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> this is... This is Senshin Jogo Gu Jugo Kure? Is that it? Jigoku Umare. Jigoku Umare. Yeah. I recognize that name. I've actually heard a fair bit about you. Yeah, I heard that your family is legendary for being swordsmen and protectors. It's really cool that I finally get to put a face to the name. I mean, I guess I'm kind of the youngest son anyway, so I'm not exactly the most important of them. Still, it's nice to be able to put a face to anyone in the family. It's just, it's cool to know. Ooh, is that your sword? I heard that you guys forge your own. Yeah. It uh, looks really one. impressive. Yeah, uh, Onimaru. I made it when I was about five. Wow. Uh, I would not have been able to do that when I was five. I was just still climbing trees when I was that age. Wow, that is so impressive. It's so cool to see what other people get up to and the things that they learn how to do. I mean, everyone just sees this world in such a different way. It's so cool. I don't believe I introduced myself. I'm Clover, by the way. Nice to meet you. Uh, same to you. Yeah. So, I saw that you were talking about my ears and how you were looking for a cat with black ears. I'm assuming you mean, like, a regular cat, right? Yep. Uh... That just sort of flip around the uh, child's drawing. Oh wow! We're looking. Is that what they call art here? Wow, that's uh, no, <laughs> that's bad. This is this is what they call a child to try to find its lost cat. Fair enough. Yeah. Do any of you speak cat? I speak no. I speak human. Well, common. I think most uh. people speak common. If you want, I could try and help you find the cat. I'm not particularly bothered this about taking any reward money. I'm just... I don't know. I'm interested to see what the cats around this area think. I haven't been able to find that many. They all seem to run away recently. There was some... There was some critter yelling at some other side of the city. Not sure what scared them all, though. I wonder why. Yeah, it made my ears ring pretty badly as well. That's why I got a bit disoriented and decided to hide in here with the raccoons. It's a pity I can't make friends with them, though. Yeah, Taishiro is just- sorry, I'm just gonna be just looking completely deadpan at Taishiro through that. Sorry, I thought it would- I thought it would get a lot of- I thought that he would Anyway, be yes, it. I would like to accept your generous offer of assistance, Clover. Awesome! Alright, in that case, I will just, uh, yeah, I'll call out. Uh, probably try and be a bit quieter. Uh, animals tend to get pretty scared, especially since a lot of them have really sensitive ears. Especially dogs, but also cats. We cats tend to have more sensitive eyes, but the ears are still more sensitive than a human's. You'll want to be careful with that. Understood. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. You didn't know. Yeah, just, it's probably good to keep that stuff in mind in case you're trying to make friends with more animals in the future. Alright. So, I've been around the city a bit for the past couple of weeks, and so far, all I've really seen is the upper layer. There's a few entrances to the underground, not the sewers, but the underground proper. I haven't really had the guts to go down there. I'm not really good with confined spaces, but some of them are quite nice. I've met some of the dwarves that have popped up from the bottom there. Seem to be quite friendly folk. Fair enough. Well, I guess we should start with them, huh? Maybe. 
I mean, depends whether you're looking for the cat. I don't think most cats generally like going that deep underground. Unless you've got something else you want to do. I just assumed you were looking for the cat, since that's what you were saying. Yeah, we're just looking for the cat. Okay. And Clover will just go darting ahead. Uh, starts on two legs. Uh, you'll notice that she tends to be wearing what looks like a large billowing cape, but then you'll notice that she's just, you know, going on all fours, then going, nope, nope, compose yourself, <laughs> gets back on standing up regularly, and then just looks down the next alley. And this one looks to be next to a fishmonger's. And she'll go, oh yeah, if there's anywhere the cats in this place are running to, it's definitely here. Yeah, that hmm. tracks. And she'll just go behind there, and you'll start to hear a loud purring. And then she'll just go, uh, what was the name of the cat again? It'll probably help if I can know what to call them. Mr. Tibbles, I believe. All right. And you'll just hear a meowing noise, and you'll see a, a couple of uh, small cats pop out. All of them are pure white. And then you'll just hear a bit, and Clover will just go, okay, okay. So they say that they've seen a cat like that before, but the cat seems to be hanging out in the stables for the most part. Comes here around midday most days to get some food, but then heads back to the stables. Ooh, okay. Looks like Mr. Tibbles made a friend with one of the horses in there and just really likes to hang out. Looks like he's a bit of a free roamer. Mostly because, oh, his owners don't pay enough attention to him, and the kid always pulls his tail? Oh my goodness, poor Mr. Tibbles. Yeah, that ain't great. Uh, we could probably just tell a kid not to do that once we get them yeah. back. And you'll just hear a bit of purring, and then uh, Clover will just politely nod to the cats, who will just attempt to salute and just stand on three paws and just salute. And <laughs> <laughs> Clover will just go, Thank you so much for your help. Oh, that was in common. Then purrs. Okay, cool. All right. I am definitely stopping by here to grab some fish later because, damn, that smells nice. But on to the task. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I've noticed that seems to be a trend with a lot of animals. They tend to run away when they're not being cared for all that well. I mean, people tend to do it as well, but generally people have more reservations about doing it. Some botched connections to others. I think that's the main difference. People get attached to people that end up hurting them. Animals don't really get as attached. When people start hurting them, they run away. People, though, they tend to stick around. It's quite sad, really. They tend to stay in situations that really hurt them. Yeah, that definitely sounds like people, all right. Is that what oh, happened that's... to you, Taishira? Um, I don't know if it was exactly the same, but... I mean, I had my, I had my master, so... Oh, mm -hmm. you poor kid. Uh, the more I hear, the more I just want to give you a big hug and tell you it's all going to be okay. Uh, I'm, I'm okay. I know that it's okay. I know it's okay now. I got the, I got one of the coolest heroes ever on my side. Oh, nice. Is that... And she just points okay. over at Senshin. Yeah. I think nice. I like that. <laughs> 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 yeah, Taishiro is just going to... Like, open out his arms. Just, I'll take the hug, then. <laughs> Clover will just come in and give him a big bear hug. She's surprisingly a strong hugger, despite what you expect from the fairly lithe and petite frame. Although, you will notice that Clover is pretty short. Like, you know, for a human. By human standards. Probably only about five foot nothing. So, probably hasn't got that much on Taishiro, surprisingly. Fair, 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 fair. Alright. Let's go and collect our reward and also probably inform the kids to stop playing on the cat's tail. Okay. So, as you continue along, you'll notice various other businesses just seem to be having a little bit of uh, patronage. You'll notice one that's in another dark corner, which will just have what looks to be a sign saying the Midnight Inn, and then near the front of it, it will say, Adults Only. And then it will just be relatively locked from the outside. Y you, 
you can be fairly certain what's in there. Yep, not going there. Okay. Um, hey, what's the building? We'll tell you when you're older. <laughs> That's not for kids like you to find out, Taishiro. It's okay. Wait, I thought you were the same age as me. I mean, I'm still fairly young, but no, I'm I'm about 19. So I'm <laughs> uh, aging works really differently between different species, though. I'd say that I'm a fairly young adult. I only left home a few years ago. Generally, uh, we tabaxi leave the home as soon as we're able to fend for ourselves so that we can go out, explore some more stuff. Then when we get old, we come back and tell all the state, all the stories of all the places we've been. We have a really rich oral history. <laughs> if anyone can pay attention to it, that is. Most of us prefer to just go out and experience stuff for ourselves. <laughs> right. Um, I think I've got the address right. So you continue past a lot of these areas. Looks to be fairly standard city stuff. Over here looks to be a bit of a slums. And this is probably the only area that actually looks like the description because it's it's a mess. There's rats climbing all over the place. There are people that look to be in a really bad state, which it seems to be really strange because it looks like a lot of the sellers have got various sections of their wares, which are either half price or legitimately just going, take it, we don't want to throw it out. The A lot of the inns will have similar sections. There's a lot of food available for either very cheap or free in this city, so it seems very strange to see people that are legitimately starving when there's that much freely available as you've been wandering around. Okay, what the hell is going on? And um, Shouldn't we try and help them? It looks like it's a combination of a lot of races. Some human, some null, some dwarves, gnomes, all sorts. It doesn't seem like it's particularly discriminating. The only thing in common they have is just that sunken look in their eyes. But some of them appear to have something off with their eyes. It's not like the hybrid races which might sometimes have yellow eyes or the tieflings which sometimes have red. These people seem to have entirely milky white eyes. Not like a blind person, though. It looks like they're almost glowing. There's something very wrong with some of the people here. Most okay. of them are just malnourished, but some of them look like there's something strange and more sinister going on. Uh, weird eyes, boss. Yeah, I've noticed. I'm gonna lean down like in front of one of them and try and talk to one of the um, glassy-eyed guys. Okay. One of the okay, glassy-eyed guys will just look at you, not blink, not respond, just stare. Yeah, you're a mm -hmm. good pal. I'll try doing the same with one of the gnolls and talking in gnoll. Just, hey, are you okay? Are you approaching an adult or a kid? Uh, I guess a kid? Okay. The kid will look up at you, and the eyes seem to return to normal for a second as the kid goes, I'm scared. M my mom disappeared. I don't know where she went. I saw her going to the castle wall, and then, then everything disappeared, and now I'm back here. I hope she's okay. I don't want her to be a zombie. I'm sure she's, I'm sure she's going to be fine, kiddo. In mm -hmm. fact... And um, I'll turn over to Ascension and just... Um, we're going to make sure of it, right? What? In common. I'm, I'm still paying attention to the other guy, so... I'm clicking. So, I'm just oh, going to... My dad's calling me. Hold on. Okay. Right okay. Yeah, I'm going to just keep looking between people. Then just... Okay. Um, yo, pal. It looks like about a quarter of them are looking glossy-eyed, and the rest of them are just looking impoverished. What the hell is with these guys? Mm, some the kind of will, spell? The kid will look up at you and start speaking in Null. Taishiro will be translating. I'm just going to say that Taishiro is translating while Eli is not here. And Fair. it looks like the kid isn't particularly fluent in common. And the kid will just go, 
it happens sometimes. Sometimes people just lose sentience or awareness. It's sometimes superstition that people lose their souls, but that can't be it, right? Surely they wouldn't still be able to move their bodies if they didn't have their souls. But some of us are able to snap out of it. I'm not sure what it is, but it scares me. And some of them seem to just move around mindlessly. They... I think my mom got hit by that. She ran up to the Ow. wall and there was a crossbow bolt. I hope she's not a zombie. I'm scared. Mm-hmm. We're finding out the hell's wrong with this town. People get sent here when they get sick. There aren't walls around the place because the people who are sick, they don't exactly move. I don't know how they're managing it, though, to keep the sickness away from everyone else. I guess it's easy because no one looks here. They're too scared to look here. So, I guess putting the sick people with the poor people means that the rest of the city looks normal. I'm back. Mm -hmm. I'm just yep. saying that you were translating what the kid was saying. The kid was basically saying that uh, the mom got shot with a crossbow bolt, uh, and he's hoping that she's not a zombie, and also that, yeah, just everything seems to be screwed, all of the sick people are being put in the slums, just, yeah, no one's really looking at it, that's why everywhere looks normal. We need to get it. We need to figure out what the hell's going on as soon as possible. I think if we want to do that, we should probably try and get a look at the castle, right? Yeah. Uh, return the cat. We'll return the cat first, and then I'm gonna find the highest place where we can go easily and scope out the castle. Okay. okay. Uh, hey, if you're a good climber, I... I know a couple of good trees. I, I nearly got shot down from them a couple of times, but I was just looking at a pretty bird. I don't know what their problem was. I couldn't jump over that wall if I tried. The tree was way too far away. I guess they couldn't see that, though. Maybe they thought I could fly. Hmm, I wonder if I can fly. But that's not important right now. Yeah, uh, cat first, cat first. And... Uh, is just gonna... Uh, Taishiro is just gonna turn back to the kid and just, um... Listen, there's a... Listen, there's a building over... Um, and try and give directions to the... Um, to the inn, just... There's a building over that way that'll um, take that'll take you in, and um, they'll keep you they'll keep you safe while we try and find your mom. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And the kid will just reach up and give Taishiro a hug, and then go heading off in the direction. The kid's eyes seem to have stopped being so glossy. I guess the contact seemed to help this kid. You'll just see Clover just head up to one of the other adults who's looking glossy-eyed, and you'll just see her just whispering to this person. Hey, it's gonna be okay, alright? I know this is scary right now, but it seemed like the contact helped the other kids, so... And she'll just try and give this person a hug, and the person's just standing there, glossy-eyed. And she'll go, I'll look around for a way to save you. I'm really sorry about this. And we'll then just turn back. I don't know what's causing all of this. I've seen a couple of people wandering around glossy-eyed like this, but I don't know what's making them like this. Something oh. inside the walls. I wish I could help. I just wish I knew what to do. It's not fair that people are just being left like this. Someone yeah, should really have been isn't. doing something. I just... I don't know what. I guess that's why we're here now, right, Tenshin? We're here to figure out what the hell's going on. Or at least that's what we decided to. Mm. We're here to help out. Good. I know I probably can't do much, but I'd like to try. At the very least, I can scout around places and climb up high areas, so there's that at least. I'm, I'm willing to help with 
getting this city back to rights if I can in any way. It would certainly be a good story to tell, and, well, if I can help I'm these already, guys. I'm already writing it down. <laughs> Smart! Okay. Uh. Are we gonna... Yeah, so, hand back the cat, probably tell the girl to... Yeah, we should go to the cat thing first. Okay. So you see a guardhouse that you pass by, what looks to be an entrance to the docks, which is currently locked down there's guards standing there just keeping an eye on it and then you'll see the stable and outside of it what looks to be a fairly majestic looking horse which looks like it's being led by one of the guards looks to be wearing a more ornate uniform than the others at you could probably guess that this guy is a higher rank than a lot of the other ones and you'll just see a little white a little cat with just differently colored ears the white cat with the black ears, the one that you've been looking for, just seems to be right beside the horse, just generally enjoying the horse's company. The guard doesn't seem to be particularly bothered by the cat, but then once he looks back and notices, just gives the cat a little head pat. Mm. Notices you and says, Hello there. Did you need Hi. something? Um, well, so this is on the board of the adventurers. Tavern. Just pull like, up the crayon drawing again. And I'm pretty sure that might be the cat. Oh. Uh, yes, okay. I had no idea who owned this cat, so I've just been, you know, feeding him, making sure that he's well cared for, but I'm pleased to know that he does have an owner. I thought he was just another one of the strays here. Oh, good. I yes. mean, yeah, uh, so... Yeah, absolutely. If you know where to find the owner, then that would be great. Uh, I think I do, if my translation from Todd Larise is correct. <laughs> Alright, let me look. I can probably get that address a bit more precise if you show me the address. Okay, good, because I only know like a few parts of the city well. Alright, so you'll see him look at it and go, okay, so this street and this street, and then he will point you saying, okay, so it's down this alleyway, and then you're going to want to turn to the right, and it should be the furthest house on the left-hand side. So it should be about here. That, assuming, of course, that the kid spelled the words right, but none of the si none of the streets are named anything that similar. So I'm assuming that that's what the kid meant. Sweet. Yes. Okay. I'm uh, pleased that so. you're able to help with that. Yes. Have a good day. Same to you, uh, Clover. Can you get the cats? Follow us, please. Yep. Okay. And so they'll just head down there, and Clover will just start uh, meowing at the cat. The guard will look a little bit confused, but just not along with it. And Clover will translate and go, No, uh, the cat really is... The cat is really scared of going back. Says that the neighbor tends to constantly try and beat him with a broom because he happens to be in the street, not even grabbing anything from the neighbor, not going anywhere nearby. It looks like this cat is terrified of his home. That's why That's why he doesn't want to go back. And Okay. I think I think we might need to do some persuading if we're trying to convince this cat to willingly go back home. Well, yeah. Look. I'll I'll get to come back with us. If someone tries to attack it, I will beat them within an inch of their life. You'll just hear some aggressive uh, meowing and hissing, and then the cat will look up at Senshin, and you'll just hear Clover translating. Alright. He says that he trusts you. You look like a nice person. And, yes, will come and let me know, and I'll let you know if something's going wrong. Uh-huh. Sweet. Well, let's get moving. <laughs> and then Mr. Tibbles will just go, on one condition. Yes, I want sir. I want head pats from the creature with the cute ears. Uh, do you mean the null or do you mean the cat? <laughs> and uh, Clover will just go, he means the null. Okay, I wouldn't have no. bothered translating it if it was to me. <laughs> <laughs> on one condition. Give me head pats. <laughs> okay. Oh. Tasha will just bend 
and um, give the kitty some head pats. Meow. <laughs> and you'll just hear Clover translating. Mr. Tibbles looks really happy with that. Nice. All right, let's do this. And the oh. guard will just look over at you guys and continue on his horse. And it looks like he's heading out towards the docks. Doors open. Guard captain heads out. And you guys head to the house. Um, excuse me, Clover. Yeah? The cat does realize that I'm a dog, right? Uh, you're not a dog, though. Well, I'm kind of a dog. I mean... Hyenas are like dogs, right? I don't know, actually. I haven't seen a hyena before. But... Yeah, Mr. Tibbles is mostly just worried about whether people will treat him badly. So, provided that you're nice to him, I don't think he particularly cares what you are. Hmm. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah? What's that, wow? Okay. Never mind. Apparently, hyenas aren't dogs or cats. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're more similarly... They're more... They exist in their own family, but they're more similar to rodents. Yep. Wow. That's weird. Okay. Mm. Basically, there's basically there's dogs, there's cats, and then there's hyenas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't know that. I always thought that hyenas were a type of big dog. No. Nope. 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 They're much more rodent-like if you look at the mixture of general skeleton behavior. That. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I don't. I don't know all that much about hyenas, I just know that Noel's a humanoid hyena. I just play so. one on TV. Mm. Oh. <laughs> so, okay. you get up to the front of the house, it looks to be on the bottom floor. It looks like it's a fairly standard house. The door is a little bit run down. The place looks nice enough. It doesn't look messy, but it doesn't look particularly fancy either. It's just a fairly average looking house. Okay, well, I'll just knock on the door, I guess. And you'll just see a little kid answer and go, Are you here for mom? <gasps> Mr. Tibbles! And you'll just see the kid running up to Mr. Tibbles, who instantly shies away. And Clover will just go, Wait, wait. Hey, uh, Mr. Tibbles says that he doesn't want you to pull his tail anymore, okay? It really scares him and it really hurts. And the kid will go, Is that why you ran away? Aww. I'm sorry. I never wanted you to get hurt, Mr. Tibbles. And we'll just mm. immediately start giving head scratches. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, let me just let me just quickly get my allowance. I haven't got oh, much, but I'll give it all to I'm you. Good without it. But I don't. You ran around all over the city to get Mr. Tibbles. I know that it's in the inn on the other side of the city. I mean. Yeah, but this was just the right thing to do. I don't need a reward. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Plus, it wasn't all that long that we looked for him. Yeah, honestly, the yeah. Gen, the tax back to is so much easier. We asked like two cats, and we got here, and we got them in like ten minutes. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, Welcome. Is is I'll... there anything else that Mr. Tibbles needs to tell me while there's someone that can speak cat? Oh yeah, right. Uh, your neighbor. Um. Oh, I know who it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's a mean old granny. She really mean. likes to make everyone's life difficult, especially kids she, and animals. She likes I'm to go have... scaring everyone. She's not nice. So, uh, how close by is she? Out of curiosity, I need to have a right across the road, and she'll just point, and the kid will just point across, and literally across the road next door is where the kid is pointing, and just goes. Top floor, there. That granny likes to go all around the place, just yelling at everyone with her broom. She's nasty. She isn't mm -hmm. a witch, but she's certainly a big old... Mom says I'm Meanie. not supposed to say that word. Well, you were giving a rhyme, so I can understand the logistics. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna go have a uh, polite conversation. Thank you so much, and I'll make sure to take really good care of Mr. Tibbles. Maybe you don't let him out on the street as much, too. Or... Yeah, um, but he, one thing, so there's, uh, what was the horse, so I'll so just mention the horse and what it looks like, because I've forgotten. Okay, but yep. 
just fairly majestic looking, uh, light brown, looks almost golden, and is the captain of the guard's horse. Yeah, uh, he seems to have made friends with that horse, so... And uh, the cap- it was the captain of the guard that was taking care of him? Ah, oh, that was so nice of him. I'll have to write him a nice letter and say thank you. Yeah, I would suggest as much. Thank you so much. You're, You're so welcome. kind. Uh, okay, I'm gonna give Mr. Tibbles a nice, nice bit of food and make oh, sure that actually, I show him appreciation. Yeah. David, can you pass me the bowl of peanut butter? <gasps> I rarely ever get that, but Mr. Tibbles loves it whenever. Oh, Mr. Tibbles, you're gonna have such a treat today. <laughs> and you'll just see, uh, you'll just see the kid opening up the peanut butter and just offering it to Mr. Tibbles. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then we'll just rush into the kid's room. The kid forgets to close the door. The kid's just way too excited about finally seeing Mr. Tibbles again. Yeah, I'm just gonna close the door for her. <laughs> just lock it before I like lock the door before I do it and just shut the door. Mm. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go have a conversation with the old lady across the street, and then let's go do the you know saving the world thing. Mm. <laughs> well, this kingdom, this kingdom anyway. We have weird priorities. <laughs> well. That's how a good party works, I say. <laughs> With splayed priorities that change on the, like, second by second basis? <laughs> well, you I'm expect us... Really... So, Actually, you're... no, no, you go. You if go. she's on the top floor, that kills two birds with one stone. Oh, you planning to talk and then throw? No, I was gonna suggest maybe since it's the top floor. It also, it's pretty high up, so... Oh, it's a backseat friend. Maybe I'll have to get a good view from the roof. Good All point. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, while you uh, talk to the granny, I'll try and find somewhere to climb up. It should be pretty easy. Thank you very much, Clover. I'm glad you've agreed. You are very amiable with us. Yeah. Well, I always like meeting new people, especially if they have cool stories to tell. I like people who travel around the place. They're generally quite interesting. Get to learn a lot. Mm, fair. It's always yeah, fun then. to meet a fellow traveler. Ah, uh, yeah. Fellow traveler, I've been doing this for way too long. Um, <laughs> well, let's get going. Let's also hope that we can say hello in the normal fashion. So you'll see that Clover just goes around the side of the house and will just start climbing up. You'll notice it, but it looks like most other people aren't really paying that much attention to her doing that. As you'll notice that this door appears to be very well locked. It looks like it's almost bolted shut at this point, and you will see what looks to be smoke coming out of the chimney on the top, and you'll see a little peephole on the door which is currently locked. This is clearly a person that doesn't want to get disturbed. Well, let's disturb their face. <laughs> <laughs> knock, knock, knock. Who is it? Neighborhood watch. I wasn't aware we had a neighborhood watch. And you'll just hear this thumping as she's going down. And it sounds like it's a combination of a walking stick and just thumping legs. And you'll just see the little peephole open up. Okay. Are you here to get rid of that darned infernal cat? Constantly uh. getting in my plants constantly getting in my business and trying to give me a hard time if your neighborhood watch that's something that you should be keeping an eye on hmm interesting well you see i have a tabaxi friend who's informed me that it appears as though you've been nearly killing a poor and honestly innocent animal out of sheer annoyance and if i'm gonna be frank that's far more concerning than a cat jumping in your plants jumping in them. Nah, the cat's been going mad off them. They're inside my house, too. It's not as if they're even outside. I don't even know how the cat gets in there. It's practically as if it's breaking open the windows just to get in there. I have them broken in probably about twice a day. <sighs> it's frankly very annoying with my indoor houseplants getting broken into by a stupid little cat. So yes, I try and scare it out of the bloody house. That seems frankly unbelievable. 
Well, you're the neighborhood watch. Isn't it your job to believe stuff and try and fix it? No, it's my job to understand the situation and then fix it via information I have gathered from numerous sources. Well, why don't I show you then? And she'll just open the door and you can see that she looks to be very old and very cranky. And you'll also notice, if you look closer, what looks to be a cape. But it looks like there's something uneven underneath it. Like there was... Like the clothes were layered on strangely. But it looks like it's covering her entire back half. And all you see is the front side of her, which is just standing there looking very old and frustrated. And she'll just point back to what looks to be a set of plants that look like they've been gnawed on and nibbled and pulled out of the ground and then you'll just see broken glass all over the place and she'll go I've tried to replace it with bars and look they've been melted through that is not a cat that is doing that that, that is, is not a cat wait, wait. When, you said, when you said that infernal cat did you mean literally did you mean literally or yeah figuratively infernal Initially, I was thinking it was figuratively, but now I'm starting to doubt myself, considering the fact that there's fire there. So, quite frankly, I don't think any of the neighborhood kids could have done it, and I don't know who else would be that obsessed with getting wolfsbane. That's what I'm growing here. It's generally used to get rid of werewolves, but it's also very good for my sore knee. That's all I keep it for, but someone seems to keep breaking in and stealing it and destroying it. Frankly, I don't have any issue with sharing it, but it seems like there must be some devil cat. I can't think of anything else that would be able to just get through and break through metal all the time. I'm gonna look out- uh, can I just look out which, uh, which window it is she, that is damaged, just real quick, to see if there's any ways a cat like that could get up? It looks like <laughs> it's an alleyway, and it looks like there is a dumpster close to the window. It looks like it would be possible though very difficult for a cat to be able to climb up there and it also yeah you'll look at the metal and it looks like it has been burnt through it looks like the pieces of the metal have just melted down it was clearly fire or acid or something of that nature except for the fact that it probably wasn't a dragonborn breath weapon or a molotov cocktail because none of the surrounding area is damaged just the very specific area at best guess it would probably be someone who was either uh it, it would probably be someone who was touching it with extreme heat likely someone punched it or touched it with some kind of magical enchantment it also probably wasn't a sword because it looks too clean wait what uh, it doesn't look clean enough to be a sword. It looks like it was touched by something. It doesn't look like it was sliced. Uh, uh um, Is I don't that... think this was a cat. This looks closer to, like, an actual demon. We don't have any demons living in this city. I would have met them already. Why would you have met demons already? Hey, David, do you know anything about this? Because I would have already made a pact with one to stop my knee from bloody hurting. It's not like I'm going to be living long enough to be worried about my soul anyway. I'd rather exchange my soul so that my bloody arthritis clears up. Also, it's not as if... Also, I'm pretty sure I'm the only one in this city. Scroll back, so you're a demon? Just the cloak flies off. Yes, and I also know for a fact that I didn't do that. Yeah, no, that's, uh, fair. Okay. I could do that, but I didn't. I wouldn't want to destroy my own wolfsbane. I like that's... it. I mean, I can understand that. Wait, how... you get arthritis as a demon? demon? Everyone gets arthritis if they get old enough. It's awful. Interesting. I didn't realize that. Okay, I'll keep that for future reference. Um, huh, uh, yeah, uh, so have you seen what animal's been doing it, out of curiosity? <sighs> I haven't seen it, but I've seen some claw marks on the walls right outside and the walls on the inside. It looks like it was a fairly small creature's hand or paw that was touching it. That's why I'm saying infernal cats, because my best guess is that it's, well, quite simply a fiend that's similar to a cat. 
Yeah, um, yeah. so the cat you've been attacking on with the um, black ears and the white skin and the white fur, that's definitely not that. That is just a cat. I could have I can... sworn I saw it had red eyes one time. Hmm. Cats sometimes do have red eyes when the sun hits their eyes in the right way. It was at night, though. I can't see exactly why it would have red eyes at night. Usually cats have yellow eyes. And, hmm, that's odd. You sure about that? I don't know, the little girl seemed like she didn't... It didn't seem like that, and it was weird. Oh. I'm going to ask my tobacco friend about this. I'm going to ask Clover about this afterwards. Uh, can I have a look around at what some of those scratches are? Because there's a possibility it could have been a different kind of creature. It's entirely possible. That's just the theory that I'm running with. Initially, I thought it was a regular cat before the metal got burned gloss. through like that. Because yeah. initially it was just gloss, so I thought that it was just a cat getting in, but it clearly isn't a regular cat if it's a cat at all at this point. Well, now that I'm fairly certain that that cat, because quite frankly, that cat would speak Infernal if it was, well, it would understand Infernal at very least if it was a fiend. Well... Good to know, I guess. It's definitely not that one, then. So yeah, you may um you may want to apologize the next time you, to, you can see it, then, because it was a little scared for its life. May have run away from the poor little girl. Mm. Okay, so... Mm. Well, I suppose the cat speaks common, so I'll try my best. Oh, I'll... no, it's for a cat. We, would, you, we have a tabaxi that was translating for us. Well, if that's the case, I'll hop down to the fishmongers and try and give the cat something. Uh, I genuinely did think that it was a little demon cat that was trying to give me a hard time. I had no idea it was a regular cat. If I'd known that, I would have not been so cruel. I honestly thought that it was, well, powerful enough to burn through metal. If it was scared of your broom, something tells me it's probably not that strong. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I'm my broom my is pretty out. powerful. I'm gonna stick my head out the window and shout up to, um... Uh, Clover. Hey, Clover, could you come inside? I want to borrow you for a sec. Sure. And Clover will just climb down and just swing herself through the window. I noticed some weird claw marks on the roof. Not sure what that was. Well, how many, uh, how many in a row is in? It looks like there were probably sets of three claw marks, and it looks like... I'm guessing it was a four-legged creature, because it looks like there... It looks like the creature landed and then tried to steady itself with its claws. Three claws on each hand. Hey, guys. Hmm. Yeah? We yeah. do know a fire-breathing cat. Oh, great. <laughs> it's oh. also about the size of a humanoid. Oh, good, okay. It's probably... It's probably not a uh, Gemini's cat. <laughs> Not Sorry, little buddy. That, it's not little buddy point. because it's way too big. So unless little buddy is capable of massively growing, it's probably not little buddy. Yeah. Sorry, that just clicked on me that we do genuinely know a fire breathing cat. So. <laughs> you do, but it's also probably not little buddy unless little buddy is able to grow to be very big buddy. No, right. this looks like about the size of a humanoid if it was on four legs and had a. Uh, it's probably at your best guess some kind of wyvern. Uh, a particularly powerful dragonborn who has managed to get their wings, and our cockroach who is particularly well versed in the arts of fire magic, or some other creature that you haven't heard of before. Right. Uh, this thing looks human-sized. Hmm. Is there so a not demon? a cat. Is there like a demon tabaxi around? <laughs> not that I know of. It would be very cool, though. I I bet they'd have some amazing stories to tell. Ooh, oh, nice wait, wings! Wait, wait, I can... Huh? <laughs> Clover's just uh, noticing for now that the granny seems to have uh, nice looking wings and is just getting distracted. Clover has severe ADHD. <laughs> I've noticed, yeah. Right, so if it's uh, can... humanoid... Um... I, might be able to f I might be able to sense where it is. Yeah, do you, uh, wouldn't the, you know... I can generally smell I can generally smell humans. Wouldn't you be thrown off by the demon in the room? Yeah, well, I meant, like, we could look around and... Yeah, um... Interesting. So how often does this happen, by the way? Is it literally every night? It's not necessarily during the night. It's mostly through the day. I generally sleep, well, more during the day and stay up during the night. I find that... I don't particularly like the intense sunlight. It's not because of the heat. I just don't really like the light. I feel more comfortable going out at night. 
So I'm generally a bit more nocturnal. So it happens every day while I'm asleep. Fair enough. Hmm. I'll try to figure this out. Surely somebody would have seen... Because this looks like a wyvern or a griffin or something. A small griffin. Mm. Um, this... Because this is a terrifying amount of damage for... It's odd. Anything. I would have always thought it was a smaller creature just due to how small the claw marks were inside. Outside, apparently, they're quite big, but inside, it looks like the claw marks are about the size of a cat's paw. It's very weird. Is, is it possible that it's two different creatures? Like a baby and a mom or something? Maybe. I just... I wish I knew what would feed off of Wolfsbane. If I knew that, then, well, I'd probably try and feed the creature just to make sure that it didn't constantly come in and destroy my crop. If you're looking around for a demon or something that speaks infernal, uh, let's see what's a good um, what's a good phrase you could try and use. Since it's probably infernal. easier to oh, that works. In that case, you yeah. can probably yell it out. I was just planning on saying that in case none of you did. Hmm. Don't strike me as someone who is familiar with the language. Good for you though. Oh, my family take uh, my family has a mandatory thing of taking at least one or two other languages as a class. I picked infernal because the hell sounded cool, and I always wanted to go see Avernus. Mm. Ah, yes. It is quite beautiful. I'm quite partial to Fledgethos myself. That's where I was born. It's a lovely place, although it is nice to get out of the hellfire every once in a while. It's nice and cool up here. It's a bit like a winter retreat, almost. Makes sense. Oh, one last thing, since you're mm. helping us out. Have you noticed anything weird magically with the city lately? because I'm certainly starting to get that impression. Mm. Yes, well, during the night, it seems like a lot of glossy-eyed beings just start to wander around all over the place. A couple of them... A couple of them I seem to have been able to help, though. Uh, obviously, I can't keep track of that many, but I've been able to make a pact with one of them. The only condition was that they stop having glossy eyes, and for some weird reason, that seems to have helped them. So, essentially, I'm just supplying the magical energy to stop them from being, being whatever uh, that is. I don't know how it seems to be curing it. Perhaps it's a thing that drains magical energy? Whatever it is, I've been able to help this one person. She's a young bartender down at the bottom half of the Adventurer's Inn. Uh, it's the one that has all of the quests on it. I think we are... Already... We... Ah, there's there's two parts of it. So the top part is the one where adventurers usually go. The bottom part is usually where people go if they're not particularly looking to get involved in adventuring stuff. So the bar fights are typically upstairs. Downstairs is usually more relaxed. It's for the folk that don't really want to do any adventuring. They just want to have a relaxing evening. That way, you know, any of the bar fights, any of the craziness that happens upstairs, any of the uh, more relaxing stuff happens downstairs. And, yeah, there's a young bartender there who... She's young elven woman. Seems to... Um, seems to be from out of town. And by out of town, I mean, well, out of this island chain. She's... She's quite a nice lady. Her name's Emily. I think that was what she chose after she moved over here. A lot of people don't seem to speak her language very well. I'm not even sure where she's from, come to think of it. Always hiding her legs, though. Not sure what that's all about. Ah, well. I suppose we all have our secrets. Some of us try to hide a lot of that stuff to fit in a little bit better. After all, a lot of people in this town do tend to get a little weirded out. Frankly, these old wings don't even work anymore. Hmm. Okay, I'm back. Oh, wait, when did you leave? Uh, two minutes ago? I had to go. Pissing. You should probably tell us when you're leaving so that we know. Hmm. So what do you do with our wings? Oh, I still have wings, it's just that they're very old and not functional. Generally, I just keep them laid back and just walk around. It's not really all that difficult. It's about the same as any human would do. Hmm. 
fair enough. So we need to figure out magical eyed glassy people mm. and figure out what's got them caught. Mm. My guess is it's some kind of illness or maybe some kind of poison. It does seem to sprout around, so it's clearly mm. either some something that they're all eating or something that they transmit to each other. Doesn't seem to affect everyone though. Some people I've noticed, a couple of the medics that have been sent in there, they don't seem to be affected by it at all. And it seems like whenever they have significant amounts of contact, it seems to clear away from them. It's very odd. Mm. And also it seems like magical energy, significant amounts of it, tend to help them out. So... Hmm. <laughs> That's part of why I've got such bad aches at the moment. I tend to use a lot of magical energy as a pain-killing thing, but right now I'm just trying to keep, well, I'm trying to keep Emily okay. She's, yeah, she's like a granddaughter to me. She's very sweet, tends to come around every once in a while. I wanted to make sure she was okay. That makes sense. I can't do much, but at least I want to help her be okay. <laughs> Even if it is by unusual means. So, um... Do you know if this, um... Demon cat thing has attached anywhere else nearby? Well, it might be worth asking the... It might be worth, worth asking the herbalist or an alchemist around the place. They're probably the most likely to get attacked. I haven't seen any other houses in this street get attacked, but then again, none of them actually grow anything unusual. Most of them are just regular plants. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Wait. Do you think that the... This, um, Wolfsbane stuff, mm. is it common in this area, or is it just you that grows it. It's it's not particularly common. Generally it's only grown by well it's generally only grown by alchemists and herbalists and people who know how to use it. It's something you need to be careful with and not allow to grow wild because it tends to be quite poisonous to wolves and similar animals. It's terrible against werewolves. Always gotta be careful with this stuff to make sure that it doesn't end up poisoning anybody. Since well, a lot of them don't really mean to cause any harm. It's also got some tangential properties where it's good for a lot of pains when used as a poultice. That's how I use it. Because it's like a blood thinner or something, right? Do you think? It doesn't necessarily thin blood. It just, well, tends to minimize pain. I'm not sure exactly how it does it. I just know that it does. I've been trying to research on it, but the library's been closed for a while, so I haven't been able to look into it. I really gotta get to the library sometime. <laughs> as soon as it opens, you and me both. <laughs> you said you, I think I just have an idea. Yep, let's hear it. Do you know if there's any, um, if there's any alchemists that the royal family uses? Do I know of anything like that? <laughs> You would be aware that it's the head alchemist at what looks to be an alchemy guild. They are currently set up about here, so right across from the cemetery, and there's a fairly de decently big building that they operate out of. It's got a lot of plants growing around the side, but they also very carefully guard them to make sure that no one who isn't supposed to go in there goes in there. They've actually hired dedicated city guards to make sure that no one messes around with the plants when they're not supposed to because some of them are very poisonous mm, well there is one nearby so it's probably worth checking in with some herbalist or alchemist just to check to see if any plants or combination of plants could be causing these or if any of them have been or if any of their supply has been stolen recently Thank you very much, Emily. Ah, my name's not Emily. That's the name of, uh, that's the name of my, uh, well, my granddaughter. My name's Kaylith. Pleased oh. to meet you. And she'll Sorry. just reach out her hand and 
say hi to Taishiro. And he'll do the same. Handshake time! Mm. Doop -a -doop -a -doop -doop. I just wrote down how her name is spelt. Awesome. Mm. So, well, what do you guys think? Should we head over to that alchemist? See if this. See if we can find any more clues? Probably. I mean, I can't see what else we can find here. Plus, All I right. Think if we get if we get close enough to the if we get close enough to the castle, we might be able to see. We might be able to see if we can see it. See anything going on inside? Yeah. Also, Clover, I'd like to meet up with you a little bit later, if possible, so that we can go over to Mr. Tibbles so that I can apologize. I'm also going to go grab some fish. I'll grab some for you as well. I'd like to meet up with you a bit later. Ah, <gasps> nice. Ah, I'm really excited about that. Thank you so much. You seem like a really nice lady. Ah, wow, and those wings, they are gorgeous. <laughs> the granny will look a little bit embarrassed, but just nod to Clover and then go, okay, okay, all right. Uh, well, <laughs> I would... I'd best head out now, and oh, I should probably get my cape back on. I don't want any stares from the neighborhood. Uh, yes, let me know if there's anything else I can do to help, okay? <laughs> <laughs> At best guess, uh, wings are not something that you comment on a lot, because they're probably something that some people see as just a bit weird to pay a lot of attention to. It's like if someone went up to you and just started aggressively complimenting your elbows. It's just a body part that you don't think about that much. It's just a part of your body, and someone staring at it is super weird. Hey, arms. <laughs> Look at those arms! Your arms are amazing, especially your elbows. I'm gonna comment in detail on your elbows. Basically, that's what's going on right now. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So, yeah, the party will clear out. Uh, Kaleth will attempt to just cover up the window, and then she'll head out with all of you. Uh, she will start heading out this way to go to the fishmongers, and you guys will start heading out this way so that you can get to the alchemy guild. Hmm. Well, time to search for magical guy. With lots of vegetables and fruit and weird plants that eat things. I think that was just the one lady in the forest. Oh, sorry. People. Oh, one off then. Fair enough. Well, I guess Glover can be happy seeing new place. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm never going to complain about that sort of thing. And, wow, that... Granny was surprisingly nice. Mm. Seems like once she figured out what was going on, that seemed to change a lot. Also, okay, I'm bye. never going to object to, well, sharing some fish, and it's good that we were able to sort out things for Mr. Tibbles. That could better not be pulling his tail, though. It's just so rude when people go in and just want to play with your tail. It's not fun. I don't get it. You wouldn't like it if someone played with your... Oh, I suppose that you guys don't really have tails, so <laughs> that wouldn't really make as much sense. Anyway... <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, no, we we should probably be fine. I don't really problem. Oh, okay, so now I'm back. <laughs> okay. So, uh, what's yeah, the last thing you remember us doing? I uh, no, I said that I was started talking, and then my I'm brain back. went. I don't know where the sentence was going. <laughs> okay. Back, so currently, where you're up to is you finished with the granny, and. Uh, you found that you need to go to the Alchemist Guild and go in there and try and figure out some stuff. Mm. Yep. So, let's get going, shall we? Okay. You'll walk past the graveyard area. It sounds like there's some kind of service going on in the chapel, but it also looks like you can see through, and you can see that there's a uh, fairly solid wall between the chapel and the gravestones, although it looks like it's been temporarily erected. 
Your best guess, they magically set it up for the duration of the service, and then they're going to clear people out, and then it's going to just be a bunch of zombies in there. It, You can see that through the wall, just through a couple of the small cracks, so you're sort of looking through the entrance, and you'll see the chapel and the service, and then just through various gaps in the wall, you'll just see various zombies and ghouls just looking pissed. And it looks like they're mostly muffled by the wall, but still small bits get through, and then the um, the little gaps get cleared up, and it looks like there's just a solid wall there. But you're fairly certain that's not usually there, so it's probably been temporarily magically erected, and then will get removed later. Sometimes happens during funeral services. Makes sense. And, yeah, then you will notice the Alchemist's Guild. And that place seems to be uh, fairly empty at the moment. You will notice that there is the main entrance, which is just what looks to be the entrance to any large building. Looks to be fairly nice and official. Looks like you can see a library on one side and just various offices on the other. And then behind a very large fence, you'll notice a lot of plants being guarded by a fair few city guards. So, where do you want to go? Probably have the chat with the alchemist. Actually, alchemist skilled. There we go. Words came out. Okay, cool. Alright, so there is a front desk. It looks like there's a young man who is just sitting there, just keeping an eye out, making sure that no one goes in when they're not supposed to. Uh, and it looks like there's a couple of people in line. One of them, he'll just nod, point to a particular office, and then they'll go into that one. Far as you can tell, he's the one that generally handles visitors. Okay, so uh, let's just go over what we need to do ahead. We're coming to check what again? You are currently looking to see if any plants have been stolen, if there's any combination of plants that could possibly be causing this weird effect, and also if they've noticed any similar creatures to whatever the heck is plaguing Caleth um, that are possibly coming into the Alchemist Guild stealing their plants. Okay, perfect. So uh, that's what you're line. going for at the moment. Well, time to just wait in line. The line is fairly short. There were only about two or three people in front of you, and they get sent away. And the young gentleman, he looks to be a young gnome looking fairly lively, will just look up at you and go, Ah, yes, yes. Uh, what are you here for today? Uh, we're coming to check if you guys have been having a problem with things trying to steal your plants. Animals, specifically. Hmm. Uh, I'm not one of the ones that looks after the grounds, but if you like, I can see if there's currently an alchemist free. Generally, people come in here if they're looking for particular prescriptions. Uh, but yeah, we can also look for adventurers' investigations. Would you like me to check if there's someone currently available? Sure, you have my head, man. All right, let me have a look. Okay, yep, and the Fernvale room is currently open. Let's see who's currently in there. Okay. Yes, it looks like there's a uh, looks like there's someone free at the moment. So I'll just quickly send you into that room, and there should be someone with you shortly who should be available to talk to you. Excellent. All right. Awesome. Just through there, please. Thank you. Well, let's get moving. Okay. Cool. And you will see uh, an elf, a uh, young elf man, just walk in and just. It looks like there's quite a few seats around the place. It looks like it's usually either a lecture theater or some kind of meeting room. But at the moment, there's a large table that's just set around. It's uh, It looks like it's an oval shape. And there's just a young elven gentleman who comes in here and just nods to you guys and goes, Ah, yes. How may I help you? My name is Castian. And you are? Uh, I am Sension. This is my bodyguard, David, and my... I never really worked out what your exact role was, did we, Taishiro? Him to um, be able to uh, mark down his story. 
Uh, ah, yes. Yeah, I, His story my, writer, then. Sure, it's my book guy. Um, yeah, we came here to check because a associate of ours is having a problem of some assumably fire-breathing thing busting into her house and stealing her uh, plants. Or biting its shit, rather. Hmm. Yes, we have had a couple of problems with various creatures trying to break through into here. We've had to really up security lately. It's been quite bothersome. Seems to mostly be going after things that are poisonous to a lot of creatures. It's very odd. Mostly yeah. going after strangely things that are poisonous to various werewolves, various fairies. It looks like they go after mostly things that are poisonous to various specific creatures. It's that's quite odd. Weird. Nothing that's poisonous to just about everyone. No, it's mostly things that are poisonous to very specific creatures. Right. We were hoping uh, to set a notice out at some point soon, but no one in charge of this place has gotten on to that yet. I've mostly just been observing the plants to make sure that nobody tampers with them. Hmm. Right. Yeah, because the person we were checking with, uh, they have, well, Wolfsbane, and that's what's consistently getting wrecked. Hmm. Very unusual. I will see if I can... Hmm. I'll see if I can remember any creatures that typically like to go after that. Hmm. Well, I wouldn't expect to see such creatures out here, but sometimes some owlbears, some infernal cats also tend to chase after wolfsbane. Uh, it acts a bit like catnip for fiend cats. It tends to get them quite excitable and erratic. Right. Also, well, some griffins have a tendency to eat everything, especially magically charged plants. Hmm. Okay, so this person's on a, like, a higher floor, so they'd have to have wings too. Hmm. Well, I guess it's a question of, could something climb up there, or would it require them to have wings? What floor is it? Is it uh, third, fourth, or is it a bit lower? How, how, what floor was it, by the way? Second. Thank you. Second floor, so hmm. you could theoretically climb up. Yes, so it is entirely possible that it's a climbing creature, but it would have to be something that could jump or climb a fair way. Unfortunately, that doesn't narrow it down all that much. Hmm. I guess it's just a question of, does it look like they're eating all that much, or does it just look like they're destroying it? it looks like they're just destroying it. Okay, okay. Hmm. So either they love it or they hate it, but I don't see any reason why a wild animal would be seeking it out if they merely hated it. Hmm. Perhaps the smell is making them feel sick. That could also be a possibility, but then why would they get closer? Hmm. Maybe. Is it possible that... Hmm. It could be possible this animal has a vendetta against this specific individual. Hmm. Uh, are you... I guess it's a question of whether any other wolfsbane is being attacked in the city. If there is wolfsbane elsewhere in the city and it is not being attacked, then it's entirely possible this creature may simply have a vendetta against this one person who's growing it. So someone might be training the cat to defeat the... to eat the, um, wolfsbane? Could be training it. Uh, could be that the creature is just diametrically opposed to this other creature. Some beings are able to Beautiful. sense the alignment of others or sense the nature of a creature and be able to tell whether or not they are... Well, it's some kind of divine sense. I think a lot of uh, paladins or people who are pious to an oath have it. It's entirely possible that some animals could have it as well. Hmm could be entirely possible that an animal is just angry at a creature just for being of a certain nature. So it could be an evil-aligned creature trying to destroy the life of a good creature, or it could be the opposite. It's very difficult to tell without more details, but I'm sure that you would be able to find it out, being closer to the case and all. We could. It's probably something you wouldn't want to share with, with someone randomly. Of course not. I'm just giving you general advice on what it could potentially be based on my knowledge of alchemy and some magical creatures. I can't say I'm an expert on creatures, but I know a little bit. Enough to get by at any rate. 
Generally, I just base it off whatever I can find in the library. Hmm. Okay, then. Hmm. Well, there's that. It could be possible that it's a being who is perhaps acting as some kind of vigilante. Sometimes it happens every once in a while that either druids will transform into different creatures and try and enact a vendetta as their wild form, or sometimes they may speak to animals in order to get them to do their bidding. It happens sometimes with druids who have gone rogue. It is rather bothersome, but that can happen as well. So it could even be just a regular humanoid, or it could be an animal. It's very difficult to tell. I'm back, sorry. Okay, all good. <laughs> the elf just brought up that it could even just be a druid who's pissed and just trying to get animals to enact a vendetta. Well, we may as well get back and ask our uh, associate. Of course, yes. And was there anything else that you needed here today? Any plants that you're looking to learn more about or perhaps look after? Obviously there are some restrictions on some of the more poisonous ones or some of the ones that may be dangerous. We generally don't like to sell stuff that could easily be used to kill someone after all. We don't want to uh, be an accomplice in murder. We're not the plants people. Fair enough. Well, if that's the case if let me know if there's anything else I can help you with and I will gladly assist. Hmm. Sweet. Otherwise, I will wish a good day to you. I can't think of anything, so... Of course. Well, have a lovely rest of your day, and I hope that you enjoy. And as for me, I will do another round of the gardens to make sure that nothing is attacking the plants again. <laughs> and the elf will just motion towards the door and will walk out the other door while you guys walk out the front door. Uh, the visitor's entrance, as it would be called. Hmm. Does anyone have any... Uh, yeah, we should probably go there first before I ask our bad ideas. Head back to her and check if she has any specific enemies that she could think of trying to piss her off. Hmm. Just eliminate things one by one. Fair. Okay, so you're heading back to Calith the Granny? Alright. So, you're back over at the granny's house um she's the door is currently locked and there's currently a note on there saying currently out purchasing fish be back soon since it hasn't been that long since you guys left and she said that she would be going to get the fish and then going to meet with clover so she's likely either at the fishmongers or on the way back right now man we walk places fast as fuck uh, and she is a granny, bear in mind. She is walking yeah. with a walking stick. She is not going to be walking very fast. So, of course, she's going to be taking longer than you guys to get places. Mm. Well, we should probably go have a quick scan of, you know, the... The castle? The thing we're here for? Yeah, okay. to have a check of the castle quickly. Okay. All right. So Clover will just point towards what looks like a large tree over here, and we'll say that there's a couple more over here. Here, there's generally large trees in a lot of the residential districts. They're generally a decent length away. Uh, it would probably require a particularly good jump or a grappling hook. Most creatures would not be able to do it. Clover might if she succeeds particularly well, most of you guys would not be able to do it without a grappling hook or the ability to fly. So generally the trees are set far enough back that you can see, but you can't get in there. Alright, if you want I can do a little bit of a scout. Uh, I can help some of you guys up if you like. Uh, what are you looking for? Uh... Wanna... Fuck, have we got that far? Um... <laughs> I just want to know what the castle looks like from the outside. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I can relay stuff down to you. I can tell you about it, or I can help you guys climb up here and see for yourselves. Uh, can you help me up? Sure. And she'll just climb up and then say, All right, now just follow where I step. Some of the trees aren't particularly uh, strong, so you're going to want to make sure to step on the strong branches. And she'll just climb up quickly, look down, go, Oh, wait, 
climb back down, and then she'll just slowly put her feet on each branch and just go, okay, try and follow my movements, all right? So this one's good. That one's not. Don't step on that one. This Got one's it. good, and she'll just climb yeah. up slowly, and she'll just go slow and steady, okay? I, I'm mm -hmm. not sure if you're particularly good with climbing trees, but just be careful. It's better to be slow and not fall down. I do strength. I do enough strength and dexterity training. I think I should be fine, but it's probably best to know the specific branches anyway. Yeah, it's just good to make sure that you're safe. And she'll just climb all the way up, and there will be a couple of strong branches. There will be about three strong branches up the top. She'll sit on one and gesture to the other two. Uh, currently, you're most of the way up into the foliage, but you can still see pretty clearly out through it. It looks like there's a bunch of guards patrolling the castle area, and I will just change maps to show you what you can see. So you can see this from the outside. So there is a tree that uh, you are climbing up. Let me just quickly um, move that. Okay, so you guys, you guys can notice that there's what looks to be a special uh, castle garden. It looks to be filled with a lot of pretty flowers. It doesn't look like it's filled with anything particularly magical or fancy. You'll notice that there are a bunch of guards on the wall. None of them seem to be paying much attention to you. There's a bit of a guest room, there's a guard barracks, there's a stables, a lot of that stuff. And this map is not well aligned. Sorry about that. Let me just quickly bring that back in. That's yeah, better. There we go. That's what it's supposed to look like. Sorry about that. So, oh, yeah, there's, there's a stables, there's a blacksmith. It looks like this whole complex, and it's, it's nice looking. And as for the castle itself, it looks like not only is there a wall around the castle, but the castle itself looks to be fairly sturdy. It looks to not be the prettiest, but it's definitely got some elegance to it, at least from the outside. There's a fairly large flag being flown. There aren't many people walking in and out of the castle. They're generally all in a room somewhere. So there's some people walking in and out of here. There's some guards training over here with the archery. A couple of people tending the shrubs. You can see a fair looking lady who's sitting down over here. It's generally quite a big complex. Is there anything specific that you're looking for right now? Uh, so the guys training in archery, what do the arrows look like? Uh, you're way too far away to be able to see that. Fair enough. You can That's... see the fact that they're in the archery position, but you can't see close enough to see what the arrows look like. You'd probably need to get a fair bit closer in order to see that. Huh. Um, okay. Well, it doesn't look like the arrows are on fire. It doesn't look like there's any special elemental or magical stuff going on there. Does this place look a lot richer than the rest of the town? Fuck town small, yeah. Hmm. Can, then at least we can safely say that there is that tyranny, that tyranny going on. I mean, richer in what sense? Richer is in they get all the resources, whereas the rest of the the rest of the town doesn't. I mean, it looks to be well built, but so does the rest of the town. You can't really tell all that much difference. At least, uh, you guys are probably around here. So, actually, wait, no. Where was it? No, it was this side. Yep, this side. So, you're kind of looking down over here. So, you'd generally be able to see everything from this side, this side, and this side. So, that's generally where you're looking at the moment. And so, you can see, like, from a distance, the archery training. But... As far as you can tell, they've got a garden. So have a lot of other places in the town. They've got a well. They've got some guest areas. I mean, sure, it looks like it's a fair bit bigger than a lot of the other stuff, but you can't really tell any difference in current wealth. All you can tell is the difference in architecture, which, I mean, that's just because it was built as a castle. It doesn't look like it's run down or anything. No, but most of the town doesn't look particularly run down either. There are some select uh, houses or areas that are a bit run down, but the town as a whole doesn't look that badly run down, aside from the one slums area. This... Hmm. It seems like this place... Hmm. 
the hell is this place is just getting weirder and weirder. People getting struck by magic <laughs> arrows and getting zombified. Isn't this place supposed to be? Isn't this place supposed to be like where the evil king lives? And falling apart of the seams. I don't get it. We keep getting told different things, then everything gets fucking changed every two seconds, it feels like. Yeah, this is... I, I can't write a story like this. That is not the main concern. I know, but yeah. it's important. This normal is weird. Very weird. Wait. Did we ever ask... Did we ever figure out how old that ghost was? Nope. Mmm, that's he... actually... What if he's from like 3,000 years ago or something and... But we found his... We did him. find his book. Like, that feels a little recent. Plus, there was mention of Rebellion when we got in here too. Hmm. Well... If Everyone we... roll an insight check. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, insight, I got nervous. 21. Okay. Man, wow. Alright, now I'm just trying to see... Uh, Would wait, you have seen that? Roll. I rolled a 21. Yeah, let Robbie roll, man. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Oh, come on. <laughs> okay. Bitch, let Robbie roll. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to be fair, we both rolled good as shit, so... Alright. Yeah. When you were looking at the ghost, you recalled that the ghost had milky white eyes. Oh. You could tell that oh, oh. because the being was quite see-through, but it did have milky white eyes even in the grave. The okay. same as a lot of the people who were struck with madness. It's okay. Weird. Okay. Wait, you, mean, you mean that so... that's not what all look like? Shit. So that no, means no. the ghost was probably killed because of the fact that he had been struck down with this madness plague. Okay, this is bad and badder. This what is the fuck is the cause of this madness plague? So wait, the madness plague is at the center of all of this? Seems as such, yes. Hmm. Ghost guy affected too. He had milky eyes as well. Hmm. Ghosts generally look wait. like they did like when they died, so you can be fairly certain that the ghost essentially was mad, got killed, and then remained, uh, then retained the image of when he was alive, which would be when he was mad. So it's not likely that the ghost got infected with it after death. It's likely that the ghost had it before he died, and then when he died, the signs just remained there. Yeah. Wait, so, wait, so hold on. Does that mean that there wasn't any rebellion? No, there was a rebellion, it's just they were the mad- it was just because of the madness plague. So the king isn't an evil tyrant? Oh, that's still totally a possibility, but that's not the concern. Hold on a, sec Hold on a second, I'm gonna see if I can smell him. And, uh, Taishiro will sniff the air twice and activate his divine sense, which I'm basically just saying at this point is his- Divine stored. Senses. <laughs> <laughs> divine sense, aka divine scent. Uh, okay. Well, you aren't sensing any divine or... Uh, you're not sensing any undead. Uh, there's a god here. Somewhere. Um, um, guys, guys, <laughs> guys, 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 I'm, I'm, smell I'm smelling a celestial. Is it a good uh, or a bad god? Uh, it's, it's not a celestial, it is a god. Oh, well, I wouldn't be able to uh, tell that. Is it good or bad? It's... Chaotic good, as best you can tell. Uh, it's, it's a good one, I think. Uh, God. Look behind you. You might want to just have a look around and see if you can tell where the god is. Uh, let me just get back to the previous map. Yep. So You're about here. There's a house directly behind you. And there is... Uh, Liam, can you roll for a random creature, please? Uh, just uh, a yeah. random, uh, humanoid species. Just anyone. What am I rolling? Roll for a random humanoid species if you can. Oh, you know that nice table that you me. usually have? Oh, right. Oh, fuck. I closed that m ages ago. I, I just, I don't know where that thing is that you use, and you know it better than I do. It was a wheel I made up myself, so Okay. Can I- <laughs> I closed it about a month ago, so- Sorry. <laughs> oh, good. 
It's an elf. <laughs> okay. Give me a sec, I can fuck the. Uh, yeah. I can do this really quickly because I have the old setting still in the. Um, okay. Website. That's good. Give me a set it back up, and I'll have I'll have it up in a jiffy, and possibly re-roll if it's something that wouldn't make sense. Yeah, it has to be a humanoid species. Not a dragon. Uh, too bad Sierra's not here. Yeah. Dragon. Because I'm pretty sure we all know who's here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a god here. Gee, I wonder who it is. It's chaotic good. Gee, I wonder who it is. <laughs> Pinko's back. Back again. Of course he's the first one. Yeah, duh. What are you even doing here? Whatever the fuck he wants. Uh, as best you can guess, robbing a house. Dude, no. Oh. Uh, so, gnome, what race is Pinko currently? Male gnome. Okay, alright. There's a gnome who appears to be sneaking in through the back window of a house behind you, who is definitely pinging as divine. Hella divine. About as divine as you can get. And then you'll just see uh, him just sneaking out with what looks like a little uh, candelabra, and then just you'll see a bunch of shiny blue gemstones being left behind, the window getting shut, and then the gnome just nods at you, and then disappears. Wait, what? Where did gnome man go? And the sense of divinity disappears. Um, well, I uh... <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, you just I... saw God steal shit and then leave behind a bunch of sapphires. So... That's the almighty one, I believe, we just saw. Should we go like, those left? The, uh, the sapphires were left in the house. Yeah. In that case, probably not. Um, yeah, they were left in the house as compensation for the stuff that Pinko randomly stole. Also, you can smell it? something that smells like really nice food. And it looks like that was not left in the house. Do you want to tr go and grab the nice food? No. Oh, yeah. Why not? Let's hop down off the tree then. Okay. Oh. Wow. Nice. What is that? I've never seen something that weird. What was that? Pretty sure that's the almighty god Pinko. Wow. That's... Okay. Yeah, I suppose that is how people usually see him. Huh. Never would have thought I would have seen him in my life, but here we go, I guess. And, yeah, then you'll smell an apple pie. It smells amazing. And even though you've... You, ha you haven't actually eaten today, I don't think. Not that much, anyway. So this looks really big and really filling. It looks like it could probably serve you guys a fair amount. Um, I'm having some. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, Not even a second to... thought. Yeah. Oh, wait, we're just gonna like, stop for lunch? <laughs> yeah, Pinko made it. He's the god of cooking. Yes. <laughs> just kid? Yes. <laughs> kid, I a god a left this behind. And you'll just see a little note saying, Thanks for not yelling or saying anything. Hope you <laughs> enjoy yourselves. Here's an apple pie. My treat. I want to know what you think of the recipe. Signed, Pinko. <laughs> Sign the one above all. <laughs> okay, that's how Pinko would sign it. All right, cool. So yeah, no, Pinko left that's... behind an apple pie <laughs> for you guys not writing him out for stealing shit. Just... Let's just get the food and not look the gift god in the mouth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh... mm. So, speaking of food. Yeah. Speaking of food. Yeah. Speaking of food, you should probably have lunch at some point, right? In game or IRL? IRL. It's I mean, like three. I had lunch already. I've already got food, but if you need to get yourself food, feel free. Okay. Well, I do. So I'll be back again. Mm. Okay. Food right, break. Right. I'm gonna head to the bathroom. <laughs> oh god. Uh, fair enough. And I will tab off and fix things. <laughs> Alright, I'll meet you guys back here soon then. Yep, yep. Nice. Alright, right, sweet. See you soon. Milk yard, guys. Apple pie. 
Yeah, you yeah, were eating apple pie from Pinko. Pinko left behind an apple pie and a note saying thank you for not, uh, you know, calling out or anything. And there's just a bunch of sapphires being left inside the house. Yep. Yep. What the fuck are we doing? I've totally forgotten everything. I've, compl I've gone. So I've completely you just lost. went from the alchemist guild, and you were trying to go back to Kalith, who you were hoping to figure out if she had any enemies. She's currently out at the fishmongers. Uh, she will likely be back in a bit, but she said that. She was leaving the house when you left to go to the fishmongers to grab some fish so that she could uh, give an apology to Mr. Tibbles and Clover would translate. So that's roughly where you were up to. So you were looking into the castle to try and get a, better, a bit of a better lay of the land when Taishara's divine sense popped up with just, Ah, oh, by the way, there's a god here! <laughs> Uh, in the grander scheme of things, we're trying to figure out how to prevent, or how to stop the plague from going around. That's turning yeah. people insane. You also realized that the ghost had milky white eyes, so likely was killed because he had the plague. And was insane, so it's likely the rebellion never actually happened. Oh no, well, the rebellion it, did happen, it's well, just it's that like the people who started the rebellion were reasons, not sane. For reasons that we thought it did. Yes, which is... Yeah, makes sense. Ah, uh -huh, now what the fuck do we do? Ooh. Well, at the moment, you could either try and uh, meet Kalith in the street, although you might not be able to catch up with her. You could try and go back to an adventurer's guild. You could try and scout around and see if you could find anything else interesting going on in the city. Uh, also, Clover told you that there were some entrances to the underground and some dwarves who are possibly smuggling some people out of the city so there's a few different places you could go it really depends on what you want to investigate if you really want to occupy yourself for a couple of hours and maybe earn some money you could always try and clear out some zombies in the graveyard it really just depends what you want to do fuck it look i i brain dead time let's just go kill zombies i i can't think of my brain's so knocked off course now that i need to put myself back in the game as best i can fair Okay, yeah. so you want to earn a bit of money. Got it. Oh, no, I don't want to play a combat instance, because that's something that I can do with the less brain power. Yeah, uh, I'm just saying, in character, you're going to be earning a bit of money, because this will pay. Like, this is an adventurer's quest that will pay. You haven't got the notes, but if you go up to one of the guards outside the uh, cemetery and just say, you know, we're adventurers, we want to go in, we want to um, kill a couple of zombies, uh, then... What they'll probably do is they'll, you know, give you a bit of assistance where possible to make sure that uh, you can kill a lot of them. Problem is, a lot of them don't come out during the day, which is why the guards generally don't go in there and kill them. Generally, the zombies will remain underground a little bit, so there's some small crypts that they end up in, which they try to lock down, but sometimes the zombies get out. So generally, they won't come to the surface unless it's night. If you want to fight them during the day, which it's probably mid-afternoon at this point, so it's probably about like 4 p.m. or equivalent. So it, will, it won't be night for a couple of hours, but you might still be able to fight them down in the crypts if you want. Mm. Hmm. Sweet. Well, yeah. I guess we're going to go fight some zombies, huh? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> time to <laughs> time to uh, walk over graves. Uh, no, that doesn't sound right. We're not technically walking anyway. <laughs> All right. So I guess we will have to walk there. Cool. So you're planning on going down to the uh, just going up to the entrance to the graveyard and just chatting to the guards. Letting them know that, yes, you do in fact want to uh, go in and kill some zombies. <laughs> Basically, how they're going to have it is uh, the crypt is generally divided into sections. So they can either pay you, if you just want to go around everywhere, uh, they can either pay you per zombie head or they can pay you per section. The uh, Generally, the per zombie head is a small amount and relies on you killing a lot of them. The per section just relies on you clearing out a space and then essentially setting up some holy water or some runes to make sure that zombies don't uh, come back into that section. So it generally depends on whether you want to just go in and murder stuff or whether you just want to beat them back and clear out an area to make it safe. I think it would be a good idea to... 
um, try and clear out the areas, right? Yeah, that sounds like a thing we should do. Yeah, so in that case, the focus here, won't so... be on killing the zombies so much as just driving them back. So in this one, you can kill the zombies, but you'll be paid based on clearing out an area. So even if you just push all of the zombies back somewhere else, then that's fine. You can also bring back zombie heads, and you can do both at the same time if you want. Hmm, okay. So, basically, you have two different ways that you can get paid. The larger area that you clear, or the more zombies you kill, or both. Brad, well, well, pick whichever one is best. I don't know. I, 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 once again, no brain power, I just want to fight shit. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, I have- the, the shonen has done the required amount of thinking, now it is time for punch fighting. Alright, <laughs> fair enough. Well, in that case, you'll notice a, uh, ruddy-looking dwarven guard just having a look at you and going, Alright, so you're- uh, Sir, so you're looking to go into the crypt. Uh, if you're looking to, uh, go to a grave, it's not really all that safe at the moment. We're trying to get some adventurers to clear it out. If you're adventurers, then- by all means, just uh, note down your names or your party name if you have one. Um, uh, you can get paid uh, per zombie head, or you can get paid for clearing out an area. Uh, or both. You know, those are both options. Mm. We, we, we can... Nope, never got a name. I'll look at it later. Let's well, just put our names down for now. Alright, yeah. you can just put down your individual names if you like. Uh, and yeah, otherwise if you want to put down a party name later, then you're more than welcome to. Is Kaishiro spelt with I? <laughs> it's your name, dude. We ain't not sure how to spell it. Um, spell it however you feel comfortable with spelling it. The most important thing is that you're able to uh, recognize your own name and that it's yours and yours alone. I'll just put an I here. And awesome. Here. Nice. Alright. So, let's see. That's uh, Taishiro, Sanshin, and David. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, and um, will the uh, the cat lady be coming with you? And Clever. I Maybe mean, or not. Uh, if I can get myself a bow, then I could probably stand back. Uh, also, I'm pretty good at uh, shooting stuff from a range. I'm fairly nimble. Usually, I go in and shoot stuff with a bow or throwing knives when I need to defend myself. Not that I need to do it that often, but I could probably help if I stay at a distance. Do you want my help? I mean, I can. But I probably won't be able to do anything close range. That's fine. Alright, sweet. And the guard will just go. Now, you're aware that uh, they're undead. You're probably going to um, at least find it helpful if you have some uh, holy senses or some holy water or something like that. Uh, if you want uh, to get some equipment, we have a few... Um, we don't have any uh, blessed daggers at the moment, but we do have some holy water and some holy oil that you should just be able to get from over there. Uh, so if you're willing to go in there and do some work, then you can just get that for free to use while you're doing this. Um, so pretty much, if you're willing to do the job, then you can get that. So just head over there to the quartermaster, and they'll give you enough to coat all of your weapons and a few vials of it to just chuck at them if you want. Mm. Alright, so just head over there, uh, get your holy water, and yeah, just bring back any zombie heads that you have so that we can burn them. And it's both as a token and as uh, reassurance that they won't come back, and you should be pretty good to go. Fantastic. Okay, let's go do the thing. <laughs> Alright, oh. so you head over to the quartermaster, who will just say, Okay, your adventurers will just hand you a couple of vials of holy water. You each get three vials of holy water. If you throw them, they will deal some splash damage to zombies, and it will generally be quite intense radiant damage. It will generally uh, act a fair bit like acid does on normal creatures. It won't harm you guys if you're hit with it. Um, because it's, well, you're not undead, and it's mostly effective against undead or evil creatures. You've also got a holy oil, which is essentially the blessed, it's a blessed oil, which makes your weapons more effective against undead. They will deal some extra radiant damage and count as magical weapons for the purposes of the attacks against undead. Oh. <laughs> 
you can also use it on so you can use it on your swords your arrows daggers pretty much any weapon that you're using you can probably attach holy oil to it will deal an extra 1d4 damage uh, per attack so it's not much but it is also radiant damage so it will be doubled mm. that's not 1d4 mm. plus proficiency uh, it's just a straight 1d4, which will be doubled because they are undead. Fair. Sweet. So basically, effectively, it's 2d4. 2d4, but not plus proficiency. So, okay. yeah, I will just show you guys the crypt map now. So, Ooh, nice. yeah, nice. so you guys will be entering through the bottom. Uh, so first things first, uh... What's your strategy going to be? What's your marching order? Uh, Taishiro at the back, because... Yep. Well, oh, actually, Taishiro should be, be in the middle. Yeah, Taishiro will probably be in the middle. Uh, Clover's going to be at the back, because she's really shit at close-range combat. She's essentially got the specialties of a rogue. Obviously, because she's definitely got a high dexterity skill. So, she's going to be mostly trying to land attacks from the back. She's going to be hitting stuff from a range, uh, throwing stuff, that sort of thing. She's got no close range capabilities, no grappling capabilities. Her thing is going to be entirely providing fire support from the back. She can also probably run around and give people healing potions if they need it, and if Taishiro isn't doing it at that exact point. Well, I'll go up front with David since we're calling the frontline fighters. Yeah, okay. So we've got two frontline and two backline. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. So, as you go in, um, you will the holy oil, and the holy oil will actually light your blades up a little bit. It will give you about uh, ten feet of bright light, and then another ten feet of dim light. So you should be able to see what you're fighting. You won't be able to see far, but even if there aren't torches, you won't be blind. I mean, I have dark vision anyway, so. Yeah, but dark vision. Dark vision only turns dark light into dim light, which means that you'll still have disadvantage. So it's better to have bright light. Because yeah. basically that means that you can see for 20 feet Taishiro uh, as bright light. Because dim light is as bright light. So okay, it's yeah. still better for you to have light than not, even with dark vision. Because that way you don't have disadvantage on all of your attacks. Fair enough. Hmm. So... The first room is clear, and you will see that there's a couple of uh, magical barriers. It looks like there's a lot of brightly glowing runes, and any zombies that get close are... They look like they are getting burned a bit, so they generally tend to step back away from it. It seems to be the only thing that... The only hazard that they're actively avoiding. Hmm. But, yeah, you guys can safely pass through it because you're not zombies, but you probably wouldn't like to be undead and try to pass through that. Fair. Well, David have idea. And he'll immediately start hopping down the rune as quickly as he can. Okay, so there's a combination of runes. Most of them have the uh, general theme of destroying undead. So there will be one that will literally just say uh, destroy undead. Uh, one of them will be uh, light. Another one will be uh, radiant flame. That will allow you to deal some radiant damage. I'm just writing these down. Uh, and let's see, what else would there be right there? Uh, let's see. Um, I'm just going to write this down because I recognize it. Um, Fairy fire. So, a bunch of runes basically like that. Stuff that lights stuff up, generally is effective against undead, all of that sort of stuff. So, Ooh. that's the sort of thing. That fairy fire rune's gonna be very useful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. So, basically, anything you hit will, uh, you know, allow you to have advantage against it. Neat. Okay, then. So, yeah, those are the runes that you will pick up that you can now use. Oh, man. So, Just gonna summon. Yeah. Uh, I want to summon a bunch of sunny suns and then just 
have radiant sun no, supernova explosions or something. I don't know. Mm. You're not. You're not Narvok. You're not having supernova explosions. No, no, definitely not. I thought that was Ocker's thing of supernovas. You know, it's like Venus supernova. Yeah, but radiant supernovas is. Not okay, that's fair. All right, cool. So you guys will see that there's a bunch of zombies. It looks like a lot of the, um, it looks like there are coffins, which most, for the most part, how they're built is that they generally have just various ashes in them. It looks like they always burn bodies. So it's unusual to see that there are zombies here. It looks like what ends up happening is a lot of them will essentially be bones that were left there in the walls a long time ago before they had the common sense to realize that undead generally tend to rise for some reason and it looks like they've almost had the ashes just build around them to turn into what looks like well what looks like some kind of shadowy flesh it's a strange look it doesn't smell bad it just looks like the skeletons essentially have had all of these burned parts of bodies just form into what looks like a new body for all of them and they just start looking at you guys you're pretty sure they won't be able to attack you through that but if you wander past these doorways then they will hmm. oh everyone ready up you're attacking <laughs> good news is you have an easy way to escape if you need it neat Yep. Uh, where's our uh, minis? Uh, let me just get your minis up. I'm just going to grab some random ones just because that's going to be easier. Uh, let's see. Okay. So, let's see. Uh, night. Let's see. Uh, Alright. Uh, actually, no. Let's go for this one. That one looks better. Okay. I'll shrink that one down so that it's one square. Uh, let's put that down as... Uh, Edit? Can I edit it? No. Nope. How do I... Uh, sorry, I'm forgetting how a lot of this stuff works. Ah, oh, that's because it's on the freaking map layer. Sorry. I'm an idiot. I haven't We're run minis this. on this in a while. Okay. We are very well away. You're an idiot. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay. Alright, cool. Ascension. Controlled by Liam. Okay, there we go. There's Ascension. Flap up the health, I guess. Okay. Uh. All right. Cool. Now there's a Taishiro controlled by Eli. All right. There's a Taishiro, and now let me find a David. Um. So. Oh wait, that's health at, uh... It's like 8 at this level, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, it should be, uh, 8, uh, or whatever the maximum on your hit die is, plus your constitution modifier. Which is 8. Fair. I'm a size small, so my maximum... So my hit die is a 6, and I have a plus 2 con. Fair. Okay, let's see. And let's get some undead in there. <laughs> Doop. 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 Just... <laughs> bunch of random things in there. <sighs> yeah, just I just registered that it's like, my brain's turned off. I don't know how much longer I can do roleplay. I need to switch to combat. <laughs> Fair. Well, yeah, there's just... A bunch of stuff in here. I'm just gonna pick a random one for David. I can't find anything good, so I don't freaking know. Uh. Why can't I find the thing I'm looking for? All right, that'll do for Clover and I don't know. I'm just picking random ones. I'll find better minis for you guys later. I'm gonna say that one actually does suit David quite a bit. Fair. Controlled by 
Eli, and then we'll just put down Clover. All right, everyone roll initiative. Hooray! Ba -da 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 -da. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Add right, turn. Frontline fighters are going last. Oh, great. Okay, uh, add turn. Oh, I think what? everyone's oh. going last. Everyone Damn. can't go last. Someone has to be the last. Robbie, roll off. Okay, roll off, Eli. <laughs> Why, Why couldn't that go for... Why couldn't that be earlier? Alright, so, uh, David got a five, and, uh... Alright, add Taishiro turn. Taishiro also got a five, but... David got a five, uh, and then Taishiro also got a five. Add turn, Taishiro, five. Okay, now let's roll for Clover. Uh, Clover got a three. She'll be going after Sension. No need to roll for that because NPCs always go later. So add turn. Clover gets a three. How are you guys all getting shit rolls? Okay, so let's see. One, two, three, four... Five, six. Okay, let's just let's just roll five because I can't be bothered. Okay. Uh, of course, all of the enemies get good except for like the one that rolled a three. So I'll just go left to right. Okay. So let's see. I've got a great idea, guys. How about we don't step through the giant thing, meaning the enemies will attack us until it's our turns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a smart idea. That's yeah, a good I'm idea. Happy. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. question. Yep. What yeah. is up to 12? Is that a colored one? Uh, I don't believe he has any colored ones. He might just do a colored panel or two. Oh, this seems like there's a lot more gray tones on this thing than normal, and I know that Shonen Jump doesn't actually give the colors, so... They occasionally do color pages where it is one piece. Yeah, but the app doesn't. The, the app occasionally also does color pages. Of course, one piece isn't hot. There are three peop There are three characters that got a three. Okay. So, uh, top of the round, this idiot, okay, uh, this idiot, uh, is going to stand still and do nothing. Next turn, this idiot is going to stand still and do nothing. Uh, this idiot, stand still and do nothing. This oh, one, uh, stand still and do nothing. Eli, David. Yeah. Eli, it's not a colored page, by the way, it's just that he does this in a lot of his early chapters. Damn. Okay. Anyway, yeah, sorry. Okay, uh, wow, this, uh, situation. But Daddy Dads will be dead dead. Or will go up in flame. Or, or beer. Drown dead in beer. Shut the point. fire rune! <laughs> okay, boss. <laughs> Fine. Chuck the beer, just use the fire rune! <laughs> okay, he'll, he'll toss the... Because he would have had, like, the Fire Rune and the Radiant Rune prepared. So he's like, alright, fine, fire with fire. A bit of fire to spice up this undead life. And then he just tosses it. Okay. <laughs> alright, so that's a dex save, right? Yes, I believe so. Okay, cool. Alright. Uh, so you'll probably be able to hit two of them at most. Yeah. So, which, uh, where are you chucking it? I guess I'll chuck it with where the three are, over here. Alright, so you can hit two of them, so are you hitting the left hand two or the right hand two? I'll do the right hand two. Alright, cool. Uh, so they rolled a three and a four, respectively. Yep. I don't think maybe. they succeeded somehow. Uh, definitely not, no. <laughs> yeah, just, just a hunch. Okay, so how much damage does that deal? Uh, Radiant... The Radiant Rune, or Radiant Flame, would do the extra d4 damage, and then the Fire Rune... Uh, the... you would have inscribed the Fire Rune on a stone, which you would have then put the Radiant Oil on, so it will deal the extra 1d4 damage, which will be oh, doubled, right. because they're undead. Yeah, so yeah. basically any of your weapons, you can put that uh, Radiant Oil on, and then it will deal extra Radiant damage. Yeah. Because they know fine. full well that uh, that's an effective way of killing zombies, but they just... They'd rather pay the money for adventurers to do it than go in and do it themselves. Yeah. Piece of shit. <laughs> they're not pieces of shit. They're willing to pay you and they're willing to supply you. They just have the guards doing other stuff. I know. I'm being. I mean, there is a play going on at the moment. They've kind of got play. other stuff to do. I know. 
it's just. <sighs> don't blame me for calling the pieces of shit. Actually, you absolutely should blame me for that, but. <laughs> Shh, quiet. Not anyone else's fault. You're my fault. That's what the fuck. Objectively not true. Ah <laughs> uh, yes, the okay, most okay, fun I have. Happening? Saying you're something, Brian. Well, uh, I need to know how much damage David does to those guys. So how much would the how much did the fire sunning things? How much damage did they do when David was just tossing them around like when he was juggling? Was that like a low level fireball? Uh. At that time, it was more than just a basic fire rune, because he just decided to... There was a lot more damage in that than there was in a typical fire rune, uh, and also I think that... Would David be intelligent enough to not, uh, you know, fiddle around with massive fireballs after they'd already hit him pretty badly? Because what it dealt, I think, was uh, 4d6 damage. Uh, that was three of them exploding at the same time, so that would be approximately uh one and a half d6 uh per die so probably uh yeah about one d6 would be uh per rune was roughly how it would be calculated yeah that's fair one d6 and then the two d4s yeah that's fair i was All right. thinking like david could do like his juggling performance right up to the zombies and being like life is here for you or not really but okay if you want to do the juggling, then I will instead have you roll performance. If you roll good, then that will deal double damage. If you roll bad, you will damage yourself and the person next to you. The p uh, which will be either Taishiro or Clover. Yeah, it will deal... Uh, if you're doing three of them, it will deal 4d6 damage. So either it will completely knock out the zombies, or it will completely knock out you and one ally. Do you really want to try this? Dude... <laughs> Come on, man. Let's have David decide. What would David do in this situation? Regardless of whether it's stupid, what's David want to do? I mean, like, I'm kind of sorry, guys, but David's enough of a dumbass. Okay, just... David, roll performance. Let's see how badly this screws up. <laughs> oh, man. Uh. Oh, okay. Yikes. What's your modifier? Do you have a good modifier on performance? Please tell uh, me you do. No, nothing. <sighs> okay, well, uh, so who are you knocking out? Uh, actually, no, first, uh, roll 4d6. Don't include oh. the radiant damage, because uh, that's only going to affect evil or undead creatures. And as far as I know, uh, yeah, none of you count as evil. Yeah. For the purposes of this, anyway. Okay, so how much damage is that? That Yeah, that's enough to knock you guys out. Okay, uh... <laughs> Fucking hell. Alright, David. Uh, are you knocking out Taishiro or Clover? Uh, you are knocking yourself out. You are also going to be knocking out one ally next to you. Yeah, this... Probably David's Clover, like, right? Yeah, David's like, uh, Sorry, cat person. Did not mean to explode. And then you both time. fall on the floor. Taishiro, your turn. David and Clover are both on the floor because David tried to juggle like a dumbass and instead of damaging the zombies, damaged you. Thank fucking goodness that there is a uh, effectively a magical wall blocking you from the zombies because otherwise you would be eaten. Oh man. Okay, well, uh... Good lord above. <laughs> Taishiro, want to heal them? Uh, I should probably help him out, okay, Senshin? Help, please. Okay, and Can he cure his dumbassery too? <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm I'm only a level one, so <laughs> maybe once I get into the college. Anyway, and I'll um, go up to and I'll go up to David and hit him with an encouraging melody. Okay. So you gain ten temp HP, and uh, what's the? Okay. You get ten temp HP, and that is not what I meant to roll. Uh, six <laughs> <healing>. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, can encouraging melody hit more than one person at once? No. Okay. It's a single target thing. All right. Clover's still out. Um, Is there yeah. anything else you can do on your turn? Yes. Uh, Sension, you got this. I believe in you. And he'll give bardic inspiration to Sension. 
Yeah, okay. Hey, what does that do? <laughs> uh, it means that you can add it onto any roll that you do. So you can add it onto your to hit. You can add it onto your damage. You can anytime add it onto. You at, anytime you roll, roll a d6 along and add that d6 onto whatever that roll is. Fan ducking fastic. Okay. Also, your willpower increases by one. It's only at six now, so it's not going to make any real difference, but Bardic Inspiration is good. Yes, it's become very powerful now. Good thing bards aren't, you know, horny bards all the time now. Um, there's three of them in a line here, aren't there? Mm-hmm. Excellent. Yep. I shall I? I'm going to use one of my uh, fire technique. Or my, that, I mean, the fire technique, so... First off, enhancement level one. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, so okay. now these guys that didn't do their turns are going to converge on you. Excellent. They're all going to use their reaction to attack you. Sweet. That was not explained to me at first, but whatever. They couldn't do anything that turn. They held their action. Fair enough. So all no, of them are going to roll to hit you. You attack first, uh, but they are all rolling to hit you. They all have a plus two. Do any of those hit? No. <laughs> okay, then. Well, they all try to hit you, and none of them hit. Your turn. Fantastic. I shall attack with... Uh, flame Blade. First form. Fire Pillar. And slashy time. Slashy Sorry, slash. That... Uh, ooh, fuck. That's bad. How much is that? That is a... I'm um, checking my numbers, so it's hitting with Onimaru, that's a plus four, plus two for enhancement, so that's twelve. Wait, okay. this is zombies. <laughs> Let's see, uh, AC eight, AC twelve, AC twelve, mm -hmm. uh, not that one. Let me just look. So, this is just a hit that one. I'm targeting, this guy. Oh, okay, you're only trying to hit one. Okay, I'm just double checking all of them. AC eleven, uh, nope, okay, uh... And AC-12. Yeah, you hit it. Okay. Sweet. So, I'll roll the damage for it. So, that's a D10 and a D8. Whoa! Okay! Oh, okay. Oh, oh, wow. Really? I'm kind of shit at this. Holy shit. The fuck is your luck, man? I think I burned okay. it all to specifically mock Sierra, basically. <laughs> Sweet. So, the guys next to him uh, mm. make a dex save. Huh? Dex save? Alright, let's do it. Uh, yep, they probably <laughs> succeed. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be half of this, then. So that's another four fire damage. Well, two fire damage. Alright, and are you... Uh, also roll the d4, please, for your uh, radiant damage. 2d4 oh, right, yeah. for radiant damage. Okay, fucking hell, I'm gonna do more with the D4, aren't I? Alright, so that is, uh, five radiant damage plus, uh, four fire damage. Is that all of it? Uh, so that's so nine damage I, overall? So, it's... So, yeah, there is... For the guy I'm directly hitting, it mm -hmm. is... One, two... Uh, six damage, including, mm. uh, four, two radi uh, including four radiant. Mm. And then the guys on the side, it is five damage, including one radiant. Okay, so uh, six to the one you're attacking, and five to the other ones. Uh, is, is it a doubled for the um, radiant damage? The radiant okay. damage is uh, either you roll one d4 and double it, or you roll two d4. You chose oh, to I, roll I, two I d4. Was, I was just asking why I was rolling it. <laughs> okay, the I, d4 is for the extra radiant damage, which... Okay. Uh, is because of the oil that you've applied to your blade, which is the uh -huh. holy oil. I, for some reason, thought I was rolling it for two different forms of damage. I don't know why. So, you're rolling your regular weapon damage, plus you're rolling either 1d4, which you double, or 2d4, uh, and then adding that on as radiant damage. Man, I kind of wish I just stuck with the first one. It would be an 8 damage, or whatever. Well, uh, you made that choice, so... Well, I miss was I misunderstood my choice. I'll Sorry, stick with it, but I'm still an idiot. Yeah, everyone's an idiot here. Okay, so you yeah, dealt uh, six damage to the one that you're in front of, and five damage to the two next to them. Got it. Yeah. Sweet. Cool. Okay. All right. Uh, so that's Sentient's turn. Clover is unconscious, and now this little shit. Let's see. What's this guy gonna do? Okay. Um. Alright, uh, this guy, let's see, 
uh, is going to attempt to hide, which has, uh, let's see, journeyman proficiency, which should be a plus four at this level. So, uh, does anyone have a, uh, let's just have everyone roll perception because I forgot how passive perception works. So let's just have everyone roll and see if anyone gets above a 20. 20 or higher. Nope. That's a seven. All right. Yeah. That's okay. a critical fail, and that... that... one. All right, cool. Yeah. You have no idea where the fuck this guy is. Oh, good. Hey, one of them... One of them, uh, disappeared. No. Noticed! All right. Top of the round. This guy is going to notice that Sension exists, and he's pissed about that. So... Oh, fuck. Uh, now, let's see, is going to attack Sension with a plus two. It's just going to be a basic body attack, so that is a 12. Does that hit? Uh, no, it doesn't. Okay, like, cool. I have such high AC. All right, Holy cool. So that guy God, tries to attack and uh, then just tries to converge on you. And now, it's going to be a little difficult to escape. I'm just going to put Clover back here because she's unconscious. Uh, so now the next guy is going to... Let's see. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to roll to hit with this guy who has a plus two as well. All right. Damn, I'm not rolling good today. Okay. Uh, but despite not hitting, whenever this, char whenever this creature attempts to hit... Roll a con save. Rad, okay. Dirty 20. Succeeds. Alright, <laughs> you, you, you don't know what's happening. You feel a bit of a burning sensation, but then it starts to clear up. You're pretty sure that would have been nasty if you'd failed it. And number three, which is this guy. Uh, let's see. Will... Hmm. Okay. Uh, this creature is going to pull off a scrap of rags that are concealing its face. Uh, everyone who's conscious, roll a wisdom save. Great. I think that's a six. Okay, fails. Uh, 17 will succeed. Uh, what did Eli get? Uh, um, roll a wisdom uh, save, please. Yeah. Wisdom save. I think I have proficiency. No, I don't. Fails. Okay. Oh. So David <laughs> succeeds, but everyone else fails. So you are now frightened, and I'm just going to. Uh, so you're not going to be able to um, choose which one of these it is right now, because. Okay, so I'm going to roll a d4. That's going to determine the type of frightened. On a 1, you will freeze and just not be able to take actions, essentially similar to stunned, but it, the condition will end as soon as you stop looking at the creature. So if you go behind a wall, then the frightened condition will end. Uh, if you get a 2, then you will need to flee, which means that you will instantly try and run out of the room, and you will keep running until you are in sunlight. On a three, you will be obligated to fight to hit this one thing, and you will not be able to move away for more than five feet away from this creature, regardless of what damage you take. And on a four, your effect will be minimal. You will just have to... Uh, your movement speed will be halved. You will have disadvantage on all attacks, but you will be able to control your actions. So okay, this will apply for both of you. So that is a two. Uh... Sentient, Taishiro, you have to run. So on your turn, you will have to dash out of the crypt. Rad. We so, should definitely get out of here, Sentient. Mm-hmm. First, uh, this bastard, let's see, is going to... Let's see. Uh, okay. Going to try and attack Sentient. Actually, wait, no. Uh, yep, yeah, never mind. Okay, so it gets a 19. Which I believe that will hit. Oh yeah, big time. Now, uh, roll a constitution save, please. Oh man, these are annoying ass zombies. Nope. Okay. Well, you needed to get a 12, so uh, that sucks. Alright, now roll a, uh, roll a d6 for me. You lucky um, bugger. Okay, your maximum HP decreases by one. Okay. 
You lucky bugger. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Okay, so, yeah. That happens. Uh, now it is David's turn. David is unaffected by the frightened condition. He can act as he chooses. Okay, uh, David, I admit, boss, horrible decision. Never do again. <laughs> <laughs> I... Thank you! David will get serious now and fix error by smashing faces in. Or non-existent, non-existent faces, but faces I mean, all the same, damn it. I mean, they kind of still have faces. Some of them have been ripped, ripped off, but... I, I'm gonna have to really go for something big. Is any, are any stones loose in the crypt? Absolutely. Okay, you can I'm very have... easily find loose stones in the wall, on the floor, all over the place. Zombies tend I'm... to just slam into walls a lot, which tends to make stones go loose very easily. Yeah, I think David's gonna have to do his bicep curling gravity technique to just... to crush them against the wall. Mm. Mm. <laughs> okay, right. let's do this. Which one are you attacking? There's, like, four clustered around Sension and one that you have no idea where the fuck it is right now. I'm gonna try and take out the middle two with one stone. Okay. Bizarrely smart. Uh, they're just literally swarming the one guy that they can reach. That's not really smart. That's not really smart. I, if anyone else goes in there, they'll attack them too. It's just that Sension is the only one that's within reach, so they're all swarming him. Fair. That's not smart. That's... Not really good strategy. Well, Something it kind of is, but, you know. Swarm the one guy we can kill! Yeah, I mean... They're undead. They're not exactly supposed to be smart. It's more like swarm the one guy that just walked in here. Mm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyway. so David's gonna try and nail them with the stones, mm -hmm. or the loose stones. And, uh, he's gonna be like, uh, stone hailstorm or something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hailstorm or something! <laughs> Alright, so is that written down as a uh, you need to roll the hit or a, I need to roll a save? Um, honestly, this is. I'm kind of getting desperate because of David's stupidity. Okay, fair enough. Uh, well, which do you want it to be? Do you want to roll to hit twice or do you want me to roll a deck save for two of them? You I can think pick. Just I think deck save would make more sense, because I'm just tossing rocks at these guys. Alright, I'll roll a deck save. Alright, uh, this one got a f uh, this one got a 5, and this one got an 18, uh, because they are not proficient in deck saves. So one of them failed, one of them succeeded. So uh, the one that succeeded will take half damage. So uh, let's say that it's uh, a d4 bludgeoning damage and uh, 2d4 radiant damage. So uh, just roll me... Uh, 3d4, uh, is probably easiest, and, yeah. yeah, uh, one of, actually, no, uh, roll me 1d4 and then roll me 2d4, because the radiant damage won't be halved. Alright, so that one's hot. so the bludgeoning is halved for the one that succeeded, but the radiant damage is not. So now roll 2d4. <laughs> okay, cool. Alright, so, uh, this one takes 7 damage, uh, which I believe has already taken a bit of damage, so that was the, uh, zombie ghoul. Uh, okay, so that one was the ghoul, so that one will, uh, okay, had that many hit points. Alright, uh, so that one's looking pretty hurt now. It looks like one more good hit, uh, should probably kill it. Yeah. And David's like, oh. and the one that let out the massive whale um, looks like it's also pretty hurt, not quite as badly, but it's definitely, definitely getting pretty sore. Yeah. Okay. Uh, D David's next party trick would be going, ah, oh, beer is nothing if it's not ice cold, and then he takes out the ice rune and throws it like a frisbee into the one in front of Ascension. He's so this one. This yeah. one? Yep, sweet. Yeah. He's trying to freeze it. Mm. Well, in place. Or freeze it all together if he can. Okay, uh, so I'm assuming that means that... Okay, so this is the ice rune? Yeah, ice rune. And you're targeting this one? Yeah, that one, yeah. Okay. Uh, so I will roll a con save, I guess? To see if it yeah. gets frozen in place? Yeah. Okay. Uh... Yep. Okay. 
All right. Well, it will get. Uh, it will be unable to move, but you will notice that it doesn't seem to be at all damaged. This creature is very likely immune to cold. So I will say that this creature is now uh, stunned. Because, uh, uh, and stunned for two turns because of the critical fails. Yeah. So uh. you did manage to deal a fair bit of damage to it uh, in the other way, but this one is unfortunately immune to cold. And last but not least, fire bending form, fire stream. All right. Beer bending. <laughs> Who are you hitting with your beer bending? I'll be hitting the two on the left. Okay, two on the left. So this one and this one, or yeah. yeah okay, sweet. All right. Uh, yep. So, do I need to roll, or do you need to roll? Basically, he's going to be using the bear rune and the fire rune together. So he's going to summon the sun, and then uh, a Molotov summon... cocktail that'll hit uh, everything within five yeah. feet of here. So that will hit uh, three of them actually. Yeah, that's what he's basically doing. Okay, Making a awesome. very fiery cocktail to take them... <laughs> okay. Alright. Yeah. I cool. This is your apology for your absolute stupidity before. <laughs> yeah, this is. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, roll me 2d8. Um, it's not gonna add radiant. Uh, actually, no, it will add radiant. 2d8 plus 2d4. Let's... I'm pretty sure that this will knock these guys out pretty badly. Yep, that'll do yeah. it. Okay. Do uh, it. Dead, dead, and dead. So now there's one that is uh, now visible. So one, two, hey, wait, three, and one that, that is that, hidden. Does that yeah. mean that the thing that we were frightened of is gone? Yes. Yay! Yeah. We haven't done that. Perfect. Yeah. I can kill things. And David's just going to be like, sorry about that, boss. Now David's serious. David going to obliterate one that hurt boss. And then he it's charges really... forward. It'd really help if you could be serious before that, <laughs> but I like the enthusiasm. Uh, I love, no, I, I didn't, no, David could be discompetent when he was serious and not talking sorry, about beer. <laughs> He's always talking about beer. What are you talking about? He was definitely yeah. born during the month of J. Come on, uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, what did we call the month of J again? I'm just trying to remember. Alcoholist. Alcorgus, yeah, that was it. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, so basically, not, David not was... thug. He was definitely born during the monk month of Thugale because let's face it, both alcohol and also being giant. I mean, obviously, right? Big, big and yeah. stupid, and also, <laughs> and also obsessed with booze. So basically, we've got a thug, and uh, Gemini is definitely the pinko of this party. Oh God. <laughs> Hey! Uh, oh my I, god! I'm finally back. I summoned Dude, her! Hey, are you guys talking shit about me again? No, I was saying that, uh, I was, to I was comparing Gemini to a character- me and I'm gonna kill you, I promise. I was comparing Gemini to a character from the last campaign, saying that, oh. uh, because I was comparing Robbie's character, David, to a character from the last campaign, uh, who was, uh, Thug. Um, and then I was going, uh, by the way, uh, Pinko is, uh, sorry, Gemini is definitely the Pinko of this party, aka the nuts one who seems to have inexplicable magical powers, who just seems to go off on random tangents, but is somehow probably one of the more powerful ones in the party. Yeah, brush my shoulder off. Yeah, that sounds about right. Pretty damn oh, powerful, not. but a little bit too chaotic to follow. Uh, yep, that's him, alright, I say, as the person who played him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Pinko's fun. So, yeah, I'm just gonna finish off this combat with the zombies, uh, and the ghouls and all of that stuff, and then I'll have, um, Gemini show up. Oh, wait, yeah, so, like, I made it in time in for part of the session? Yeah, the session is still going. How long does the session have left? Do you we have, have no, no idea. Dunno, just whenever it's people decide very, that they're done. Honestly, not very long, most likely. My brain What's turned off a while back when we got distracted. Yeah, we're probably yeah. going to finish the combat instance and uh, just wrap up, and then we're probably going to be done. But yeah, yeah. just postpone me uh, or Gemini's appearance until next session, because like I don't think 
my brain has started up for D and D yet. It was just a weird conversation with my nan. That's fair. Um, well, in that case, I'll get. I can text my bro about getting um. All right, the cool. Jackbox stuff up. Well, in that case, we'll just quickly finish this combat and then just say that Gemini shows up, not actually do anything, and then just say that the session's over. How about that? Yeah, that's it works for me. It works for you guys. All right. Yeah, well, sweet. All right, I'm gonna take the time to probably have a shower actually I'll all right sweet see you I'll back here you. soon then uh yeah i also made plans to play destiny tonight so i'll probably end up heading off at around eight nine if Fair. like you guys aren't already heading off so. that's fine I might, yeah, okay. use that. I might actually use that as an excuse to head off around the same time because i want to get some work done on my on my campaign now that i have incarnate working Fair. Oh, exciting. Yeah. All right. Well, good luck. Have fun. See you guys <laughs> when I'm out of the shower in an hour. All right. Cool. See you then. Yeah, oh, yeah. Later. Bye. Hour. Yeah. All right. And then David, David's like, David's going to make up the dumbassery and then charge forward and try and swing his chisel and hammer at this thing. Okay. Like the frozen one. Uh,. You killed the frozen one with your uh, massive fire beer rune. Oh yeah, that is true. It's already dead. It's so dead now. Oh, so the ice one in front of Ascension is already dead? Uh, so the frozen one is currently dead. Uh, this one is not one that you targeted. It is currently still alive and I think has been hit by one of your attacks, but not yeah. that many. So, yeah. My turn? Uh, yes, Taishiro, it's your turn. Yeah. You're not currently yeah. frightened because David, uh, beer ruined the thing that tried to, uh, that frightened you, so now you do not need to run away from it because it is very, very dead. <laughs> um, th thanks, David. Okay, Taishiro, oh, good. Go, five, ten. So, run up just next to the, uh, just run up to the, um, uh, Guy that's in front of Ascension. Yep, cool. And just, uh... Hey! You stay away from... You stay away from him right now! <sighs> and he'll attempt, he attempt to stab the zombie straight through the eye. Okay. Roll to hit. Uh, yep. I'm just checking. Do I have Novice or Journeyman in? I think I bumped it up. Yes, I bumped uh... it up. Shut up, we'll get to killing you later. 11? Uh, 11. Uh, yep, that exactly meets its AC. Alright, uh, so... Uh, let's see. So that will be uh, slashing plus uh, the 2d4 uh, or 1d4 doubled uh, radiant damage. Yes, plus proficiency. Yes. Isn't it, isn't it piercing? Uh, whatever damaging type you want to call it, it doesn't make any difference for attacking this thing. Fair enough. Okay, it takes 13 damage. Okay. Straight to the eye. You don't get it straight in the eye if you're only getting an 11. You hit it in the face somewhere. Fair enough. <laughs> you don't get to be that precise with that roll. You hit it, sure, no. but... Yeah. Okay, so it gets hit. It still looks fine. This one seems to be a fair bit hardier than the other one. Yeah? Well then, take this! Note blast. Um, and he will use the cantrip note blast, which just a single note musical note will, will loudly sound right next to this um, zombie's ear. Okay. Um, oh, I'm it, starting it, to it, think uh, I made my character too weak with some of his attacks. If you guys are doing some fucking cantrips, I mean. This is just a, this is a cantrip that's a bonus action. It deals one d four. It's not that bad. Yeah, and in all fairness, the runes are basically prepared spells, so I can just toss them out whenever I want. Runes are basically leveled spells that he costs in advance, effectively. Fair, 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 fair. So, if your leveled spells are weaker than what David is doing, then you should probably buff them. But bear in mind that what David's doing is effectively costing leveled spells. He just costs them in advance. Uh, so this is six sonic damage. Six sonic damage. Okay. Uh. All right. Let's see. 
Uh, which one? So you're targeting that one. Let's see. No special resistances. Okay, so six points of damage. All right, I've got that noted down. And that's all I can do on my turn, so... Okay, sweet. Alright, uh, Senshin, your turn. Yay! I... am going to figure out what I was doing before this. Right, uh, killing things. Uh, so... Yes! Gyro in front of me, right? Okay, I'm yeah. gonna start... What do I do for this? Oh, I know! I'll use this new one that I came up with a little while ago. <laughs> Alright, let's see it. Acid Blade, first form, this salva! All right. Uh, let's see how it cuts. Ooh, boy. Let's wait. AC no, 11. Yeah, I meet. Thank fucking God I meet it. Okay. Sweet. So that is a D8 slashy and uh, a D6 por uh, acid. And then either 2D4 or 1D4 doubled radiant. Oh, no, mind. It's a D8 uh, acid, apparently. Okay. Whoops. Reroll. I'll reroll. It's going to be lower, I bet. Called it. Um, <laughs> Uh, all right, and so that then, is uh, seven plus four is thirteen, plus uh, four is uh, seventeen. All right, seventeen points of damage. All right, sweet. Sweet. Is he dead? No. Great. I'm gonna use uh, action surge to attack again. All right, what sweet. Is this one. Sweet. Uh, this attack has advantage. Mm-hmm. Because uh, all allies have advantage against so allies, but you, which includes myself. I don't know how yes. to that. Yes, you are I, your own ally. I gave myself fairy fire essentially. We, I gave us fairy fire on this guy essentially. Anyway, I'm gonna slash him. Yes! 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 yes, yes, yes. Critical hit. So I'm a two hand strike. So grip the other one, and I'm gonna go try and cut his head off. So double everything. Roll. Let's see what you get. Yep. All that ones. No, okay. <laughs> Thirteen plus. Oh wait, I, f I keep forgetting to add the damage from my sword. Are you <laughs> efficiency? I forgot to add proficiency. Yeah, so that's an extra eight damage on top of that. All right, twenty-one. It's looking death. really damn close to death. It's not dead it's, yet, it's but it looks like one more hit. It's looking very close to true death. It's got like probably less than ten hit points. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, really you did a really good life. chunk of damage to this thing. And now it is Clover's turn, who is unconscious. Yeah, David's gonna have to apologize for that one. Okay. Oh, you have no idea, you fucking buffoon. Alright. <laughs> and this one is attacking sneakily from the shadows against Taishiro. Uh, so that oh. is a 14. Does that hit? No. Okay, then. Well, in that case, the guy will... Uh, appear behind you and uh, try to hit you and then disappear yeah. into the shadows again. Oh. I think I saw it for a second there. Yeah, this I think this sneaky. Mm. <laughs> Apparently, we're fighting the Aristoles of zombies. Why is there two of them? Ah, uh, no reason. <laughs> what have you done, Alex? What are you doing? Alright, let's see. Uh, I don't suppose that anyone has any big area of effect stuff, right? I do! <laughs> Alright, so, uh, yeah. Awesome, Senshin! And, uh, now it's the, uh, this thing's turn, who has one more turn since it's still alive. Alright, so, uh, Taishiro, I'm gonna be hitting you now. Because you're yeah, here. Okay, uh, that is a 10, which will not hit. Uh, roll a con save anyway, because this thing, uh, really likes to make you roll con saves. Got a fucking stanky ass breath. Yeah, it it just smells. I don't know what to tell you. Aww. Okay, uh, and roll a d6 for me, please. Oh no. Nah, oh one, no, one, no, one, no, one, no, one, no, 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 no. It's gonna be. Uh, All right, your max HP is decreased by four. So that means that if your hit points are currently above four hit points, your current hit points will be reduced to. Four hit points. <laughs> God, it stinks. So yeah, you now have four hit points. At most. <laughs> All right, David, your turn. All right, for that bastard, gonna pay, and David's gonna run in and start chiseling this thing. Okay, awesome. 
Yeah, so first attack, let's see. I think that's gonna hit. Mm hmm It will, yes. That's 1d6. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and the radiant damage, I forgot. Mm -hmm. 1d6 oh. and 2d4. Ooh, nice! Oh. Yeah, okay. You kill it. How do you want to do this? Okay, well, David's going to run in and say, Sorry, guys, for big mess up. David, do right. A little. And then just whop it over the head with this hammer. Mm. A little. Yeah, a little. Okay. All right. Cool. So that one dies. You can't see any opponents. But you'll notice that the light starts to become a little bit obscured as you'll notice that some of the areas around you, it looks like there's just a massive amount of shadows around this area which are standing between you and the exits. Oh, You've been blocked in by a bunch of shadows. Guys, Kill the shadows! Mm. Hold on, let's see if I can... Hold on, let's see if I can liven this up with a little flare. And he will... And Tashiro will cast a little flare to create a, uh, light over near the shadows. Okay. Alright. Uh, you can now see them. And they don't have advantage on their attacks. Uh, okay. They're still blocking the entire way. Actually... They have an ally within five feet, because they're all standing next to each other. You guys might be a little bit screwed. Oh, I'm going to... Okay, how much health do these things have? Because that might be the biggest part of the problem. <laughs> eh, not much. But there are a lot of them. Cool. Ah, so uh, the dangers of being a level back. one character. And the DM being a prick. Well, honestly, it was kind of dead for all of this. Yeah, a little bit, honestly. Uh, David could do the dumbassery that he did to get you into this mess, and it would probably instantly get you out of this mess. Or it would uh, make the mess ten times worse. Yeah. yeah! Yeah, I'm definitely not using that technique. <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, dude, like, what the fuck? <laughs> that was the stupidest fucking move. <laughs> Well, come on, I, I was kind of following the logistics of David learned dangerous but, technique. Yeah, but David learned dangerous techniques and David idiots. <laughs> that is true, yeah, yeah. I, I... Oh dear. I, I knew that was going to go poorly. I was kind of hoping, but nah. I haven't yeah. made this encounter impossible for you. There is a way out, there are multiple ways out, and even if you guys do end up going down, I'm not planning on making this a permadeath. This was never planned to be a TPK. Yep. Thinking about it. Uh, okay. So, what happens? Do I... Does David get to attack more, or...? Uh, have you already done all of your attacks for this turn? Uh, no, I only did one. Alright, well, you've still got, uh, I think two more attacks with your, uh, chisel. Yeah, that is true. I think I'm gonna... <laughs> Well, David's going to be like, uh, lots of shadows. Uh, solution, swing wildly and hope they die quickly. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a David conclusion. I am considering pulling out level 2, but I probably can't yet, because I think I blocked that behind a level up. Yeah, so he's basically going to... Uh, it's, basically... it's a thing I have on my thing. It's, I've just called it level 2 to keep the name as secret as possible. You guys are probably about one or two quests away from level two. Yeah. I just wanted to have you guys be on level one for a couple of sessions. Fair. But you guys will yeah. be leveling up decently soon. I'm planning on you guys reaching level two either next session or the session <laughs> after. Got it. Okay, so what can David... Actually, I might do that because I have a special. If that's if it's that soon, then it's probably best for me to pull out the other thing, considering I have okay. it. it's specifically tied to level one. Uh, it has abilities. Mm. All right. Well, in that case, David's gonna use the cantrip to give himself advantage. Yep. Sweet. You have advantage. <laughs> and he's gonna swing for the fences. Mm-hmm. No, aim for the and people, not the fences. Uh. 
Uh, I'm not that dumb, boss. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to do it. Mm. Yeah, I do have a journeyman on chisel, so that is... I love how we just left, um... Ah, Clover's fine. Clover's well, on the safe side. Clover is yeah. safer than we are. <laughs> yeah, because these things can't get past these gates. It's just that you need to get past these things in order to get back to the gates. Yeah, uh, in that case, I meet. Mm. And gonna do the d6 and... Uh... And then 2d4. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Alright, that's nine points yeah. of damage. Okay, it looks pretty hurt. It looks like it's on about half health. Oh, great. Uh... That's pretty... Wait, don't forget... Did you do the d4 for the, um... Uh, did you also add your proficiency on? Oh, right, proficiency. Uh, yeah, be... don't forget your proficiency and your base damage as well. Don't forget, oh. you do more damage than you remember. Oh, yeah. On that, Robbie, on that case... what is it with you constantly forgetting your proficiency bonus? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Stop forgetting this stuff. Look, this is why you do badly in combat encounters. It's not because of bad tactics. It's because you forget to add all the numbers on. I think the bad tactics don't help. Yeah, the bad tactics definitely make... Uh, yeah, just, it's a plus two on top of that, so it's 11 damage. Mm. Okay, uh... I think it's I'll dead. The... You killed one of them. Yeah. Okay, good. Hurrah! Okay, uh... I'm thinking, should I do another beer bending, or should I... Hmm... You can either do the safe version, which will hit two of them and not hit any of your allies, but will uh, deal a nominal amount of damage, or you can juggle again <laughs> and be yelled at by your boss and potentially kill all of them, or Great. potentially I knock out your allies. Uh, what do you want to do? I uh, don't listen to Alex. Use the beer bending safe version. I'm just saying yeah. it's a possibility. I'm not saying you should do it. I'm just saying you can do it. And I'm saying, yeah. stop saying you can do it. You can't do it. Clearly, you fuck up every time. He can do yeah. it. It's just whether it's a good idea, which it definitely isn't. Uh, well, David's probably gonna hear Sanchez head going, "Don't listen to voice. Ignore. <laughs> <laughs> listen to me. Don't be a fucking idiot. Uh, Don't listen to the right. DM. The DM wants you to be a pyro. Yeah, sounds about right, boss. Uh, Don't listen anything. to the cult of the DM! <laughs> Says the DM. <laughs> uh, DM made convincing argument, but no. <laughs> uh, Sension, who is this DM? <laughs> Not relevant, focus on the fight! Okay, he's gonna do the beer bending technique on the two in front of him. Oh fuck, I forgot to put on the music, give me a sec. Okay, alright. So, uh, I need to roll a save, right? I need to roll a dex save? Yeah, uh, yeah I believe so. Alright, uh, that is a uh, 11 on one and a 5 on the other. Yeah, I think the 11 definitely succeeds, the 5 doesn't, and I'll roll Alright, damage. half damage on the uh, one that succeeded then. Yep, 2d8, 2d4. The d4 isn't halved, only the d8 is. Yep, All right, like so that. six for the one that failed and uh, three for the one that succeeded. So that is eight and um, also uh, 11. Okay, so one of them is on half health. The other one has uh, half health minus three. Yeah. Okay, and what else can David do? Because David can attack three times, so he's just going to finish off with another attack. Sorry, you can okay. do what now? David can- I think he can attack three times just with his melee. Yes. I think I sh I should probably be able to attack at least twice then. You can. Action surge. Yeah, uh, no, I have... no. I mean, the only reason David can do it is because his weapon is fairly weak, but yeah, I don't know why- Has that not been written on your character sheet? I'm really I'm sorry if it hasn't. You should be able to attack twice. Okay, that is he why I've only been attacking once and always action surge to ever do a second attack. You action surge to do a third attack. I'm I'm sorry Second about that mix up. Attack. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry about that mix up. You should have two attacks. Especially if you're dual wielding it, you should be able to do uh one attack um yeah, you should definitely be able to do two attacks since you're dual wielding especially. Two attacks with the same blade. I'm I'm really sorry that that wasn't already written down. You yeah, you should be able to yeah. attack twice at base. Okay. 
Uh, well, good to know. I have some music up if we want to listen to that at some point soon. Yeah. It's this I'm weird video that has terrifyingly good music for what it is. Fair. Alright, boss attack. <laughs> Moo Moo Meadows, but it's in minor key. <laughs> okay. It's All a right. Mario Kart track. Like yep, that hits. Yep, 18 plus, uh, that's 10 plus 2, so 12 damage. Alright, they're both dead. Um, yep, that's it. Okay, sweet. Alright, now it is Taishiro's turn. Okie dokie, uh, Taishiro will. Oh, what's the range on this thing? 20 foot sphere. Uh, so Taishiro will set up a enfeebling mount hoodie right down here, so that mm -hmm. it hits these guys and not... Alright, awesome! So now they have half movement speed, and attacks against them have advantage, guys. Alright, sweet! Yeah. That will also apply to Clover, but it doesn't matter because she's basically out of the fight, being unconscious, and also not in the battle arena. Exactly. Yeah, I don't know why that song is so fucking amazing, because it's just fucking okay, movement meadows got... from Mario Okay, okay, so that should... That should help us out a little bit. I can't really do much else, but you guys go get him! And he'll give, uh, Bardic Inspiration to David this time. Alright, sweet! <laughs> okay. No, to Sension. He'll give it to Sension. Alright, Sension! You have Bardic Inspiration, which you can add either to your to hit or to attack. You can any add point. it at any point, uh, just, yeah, either before or after you roll. Well, I am going to, seeing as how it's quite dangerous right now, I'm going to burn my one and only charge of the Mugen Gun. Alright, let's do this. Mugen Gun. So, yeah, basically, he's gonna close his eyes and open up again, mm. and then the pupil's gone entirely into like a rainbow color at once. And yeah. he's gonna be. Did you literally, did you literally just, just give yourself y something called the infinite eye? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I see. Perfect. Oh, yes. Trust me, it has a lot of abilities and lasts a while. But I'm gonna start by uh, attacking this guy with my uh, with a thunder blade. All right, sweet. All right, Zenitsu, let's see what really you got. Really wanted to make Zoro Exasuke. Yes, maybe a little bit, and I'm proud of that fact. Oh, those would so seven hits, thankfully. Yep, AC twelve. Sweet. So that is a uh, D10 slash. Okay, um, three. And then the D4 Four. for the other thing. Uh, yep, so uh, D4 doubled. Alright, so that is uh, that is uh, 7 Eight damage. damage. 8 damage. Eight. Okay, cool. It's on a bit under half health. Great, and now I'm going to slash this motherfucker. Okay. Still advantage. Woo! Yep, okay, yeah. nice. Okay, and I'll do that with my... Uh, not great. Two. And I'll attack again. Yep. Uh, what's his AC again? 11? Uh, 12. 12. That just meets. Thank fuck for enhancement. Um, yep. Rolling. Wait, why am I doing this one handed? I have a two handed one at yeah. this point. Yeah. I'm doing two handed at this point. So, still uh, not uh, much. I have to roll two D4s because I forgot to do them earlier. Uh, also, yeah, uh, you need to. Alright, sweet. So, two D4. Alright, so that and one is dead. Add, wait. And, yeah, it's dead. Very dead. It's already dead. Don't worry about it. So there's two left. Also, yep. you'll notice that uh, they're leaving behind a little bit of dust. It's glittering in a certain way. You'll likely be able to hand that in. They said zombies, but these things you can also likely turn in. So even though they're not zombies, you'll still likely be able to get paid for them. Great. So, uh, can you attack any more times? I have... Well, if I was... So, I... Fuck it, I'll use the action surge, which I shouldn't have burnt earlier. Yeah, okay. That's fair. Shouting. Oh, that's a D12. Not that. Not that. I hit the wrong button. Liam. Yes? You're shouting. Okay. Volume down. Alright, yeah. sweet. Fixed. Yep. Uh, that hits. Sweet. Yep. And, uh, D10... Fucking Damn. hell! Just in that today. Okay, that's 
seven, so that's five from that one, and six from that one. Eleven. Mm. All right. Sweet. Awesome. All right. Wait. So that's eleven. Okay. That one's down a lot lower than I thought. Okay. Yep. Uh, it's looking almost dead. It looks like one more hit would kill it. Uh, All right. But first, let's go on to Clover, and then uh, we'll go with these guys at the top of the round. Uh, so let's see. Um, so they don't have advantage to hit anything because they're not next to each other and they're also not doing any of that. So one of them will try and hit Sension since uh, Sension's close. Uh, that one will fail to hit Sension. The other one will try and hit David and will get a uh, 15, which I believe will hit. Uh, I think David will use his reaction on that one. Okay. I see another point. Uh, so I'm that will give you a plus three to your AC. Uh, so yeah. will that be enough to stop it from hitting with a 15? Uh, it up my AC to, let me see, I'm sitting on 13, so I'll hit by three. Uh, 16. Yep, okay, it will not hit. Hey, cool. why do we stick um, the uh, reaction attacks? Um, Counter attack, you mean? You can't do them on your turn. You have to do them at some point, which is not on your turn. Uh, yeah, I'm looking for the reaction, like count, like counter attack and stuff like that. Uh, you yeah. should just stick it with the rest of your reactions. I'm trying to remember where it. I'm trying to remember where it is in the um, entire document. I mean, let me uh, look. So... Well, I remember. I remember them mostly. <laughs> I, uh, it's not in world game. lore. It's in game mechanics. Um, let's see. Uh, willpower actions, action, alright, let me just have a quick look through. Alignment, proficiency and XP, degrees of success and failure, initiative, second and final forms. Okay, hmm, alright, uh, leveling, let's see if it's in there. Okay, let's see, proficiencies, proficiency points, ability scores, race, background. They lost. Yep. Okay, uh, classes revamp. Okay, attacks and spells. Alright. Okay. Is it? Because I can't find it, that's the thing. Looking. Spells. Uh, reaction system is underneath the spells. It's right near the bottom of the dock. Uh. Enemy it's right near the bottom of the leveling in LOR dock. Thank you. That's why I was a little confused. I thought it was under game mechanics, not leveling. Yeah, I kind of put everything that resolved uh, that revolved around making your character in that dock. Great. Uh huh. Okay, understood. Yep. I'll copy this stuff over now. Yep. Sweet. All right. Uh, awesome. Okay. So uh, the thing didn't hit David, so now it's David's turn. Hmm. Time to put zombie or ghoul thing in grave. And he's. Yeah, I was gonna say like. Yeah, I think it would just go for free attacks. All right. So you're gonna go for the one next to you, not the one next to Ascension. Yeah, I'll go to the one next to me. Awesome, cool. That's just relevant for health points' sake, because the one next to you hasn't taken any damage yet. Oh, boy. It's I fine, it hasn't got time. that much health. You've already killed them all pretty easily. See, I told you this wouldn't be a TPK. Yeah. I think it would. Yeah. Honestly, it's like I you don't trust me not to kill you. I have don't. never once killed your characters. Ever. Hey! Hey! Pinko's killed himself! That doesn't count as me. <laughs> Pinko was the one who decided that he wanted to die. That's not my fault. As a DM, I have never Guys. killed your characters. <laughs> Guys, focus up. Alright. Uh, oh, oh, David, okay. whack the shadow thingy. Not 20. Okay, double whatever <laughs> you hit it, it with. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're gonna kill it. You had advantage on that anyway, but... Yeah. You didn't need it. Oh, never mind. Wait, did I not adventure? It's whatever. Doesn't no, matter. No, he had advantage because I um, had Enfeebling Melody up. Oh, God! Woo, boy! 15 plus 2. Uh, you are doubling 10. this, right? Yeah, this thing's dead. 
Yep. This thing hella uh, dead. Uh, so now there's one more that looks like it's on the brink of death. Uh, boss. No, we're hey, staring at hey. it. <laughs> boss, David here to sort out mess and apologize profusely with beer. And he charges in and just attacks that one as well. Yep. Okay. How do you want to do this? You're definitely going to be able to kill it with minimum damage. I think he has to hit it first. There's a, high ch there's a decent chance he might just... Considering how I've been rolling today, he might roll every hit and miss every one. Alright, let's see. Alright, okay. uh, bear in mind you have advantage. Oh yeah, that's true. So, you have to, uh, roll, let's see, uh, two hits with advantage and miss. It has an AC of 12. Yeah. Right, he, well, he missed the first once. Alright, what about the second one? Okay. Now 20. Alright, how do you want to do this? So basically, <laughs> he shoulder charges into the thing, smashes it against the wall, puts the chisel to its head and say, Forever good night, and hammers it down. Alright, so this room has been cleared. So now, if you stick some runes over here, then you'll be able to accept payment for the room. You will able be able to accept payment for the five original creatures plus the five additional shadows that showed up. So that will be ten uh, undead creatures in all that you have killed. See, boss, David did it. David, okay. uh, right or wrong? Yeah. One sec. Just close his eyes. Ah, oh, headache, 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 headache. Ow. Uh, okay, buddy? Let's uh, see. Just pulling out the Muga gun hurts like hell. Like a lot. Okay. It's a headache and a half. Oh, ow. It's, um... Have you ever heard of the God's Eye? Uh, no. I don't think so. It's kind of a nickname for... Well, the God's Eye or Kami gun is the nickname for um, Thug's ability to see into the future. Oh. Isn't that the... Isn't that the all site? It goes by a couple names, but the in, so the Mugen Gun is essentially a boiled end version of that. Some people have it genetically, others earn it through training experience or just raw wet, like luck. Or people have said you can get it by stealing someone's eyes, but that seems ridiculous. Mm. Either way, it really hurts after a while, because you kind of see everywhere for a little while. So I'm assuming that you guys want to stop the combat here, so David's just going to write down those runes yeah. that he saw over there, over here, uh, so that way you can clear out the room, then you guys will accept your payment, meet up with Gemini, and then the session will end. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just, I'm just And I'm assuming actually, someone's waking up Clover. Actually, the session's probably going to end when we get the payment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the next session, remember. And David's gonna go up to Clover and just be like, uh, mm -hmm. deeply sorry about juggling thing. Never do again. Learn lesson. My fur is a bit singed, but that was awesome! Wow! Uh, imagine how good you'd be once you practice that. Oh man, that was uh, better than any uh, circus trick I've seen! That was so cool! I mean, sure, I got knocked out, but, I mean, that was awesome. Oh. Uh, uh, Sorry, David I couldn't be much help. Uh, At least you guys seem on... to do well. Uh, sorry, that's on me, not you. <laughs> well, I mean, it looks like you guys did a really good job in here. Here, I'll help you uh, collect this stuff. I'm not going to accept any payment for it. Don't worry about me. I just, uh, I just wanted to come in and uh, help out. I'm mostly just here to travel around. Yeah. We did a good job today, guys. <coughs> yep. <coughs> yeah. Did the lorikeets give you COVID? <coughs> no. Just strange water went down the wrong way. Uh, oh, God. <coughs> wrong hole! Wrong hole! <coughs> <coughs> huh. Okay, good now. Uh, well, sorry, but maybe for next performance, David will do better. And maybe you can bring cats along too, for meowing parade. I could teach you a thing or two about performing. <sighs> first things first, you guys should probably accept your payment. Let's make sure that you've collected yeah. everything. So most of the things that you collect are uh, 
so for four of them, you collect the heads. For six of them, you collect just the dust that was left behind. It's some shadowy dust that you just uh, grab and uh, you just grab it and separate it by piles. It's all very clearly some kind of magical dust. Um, and yeah, David finishes the runes and you guys head back out. So let me just pop you guys back out to where you were. Um, so... Is this the right map? Yep, this is the right map. So you come back to where the guards are. Uh, the guard at the front lets you in and basically goes, Alright, so uh, where'd you clear up? Um, let's see, that's uh, six uh, shadows and four zombies or ghouls. Alright, so we're pairing about uh, five gold pieces per enemy slain. So that would be, uh, let's see... Uh, 50 gold pieces for the enemies, and you cleared out a room. That was the large entry room. It's uh, 25 gold for a small room, 45 for a large room. Uh, so that will come up to 90 gold in all for your party. Not sure how you want to split it, but there you go. And I'll he'll just toss you a sack with 90 gold. Are you guys fine with me just being the wallet of the party, or? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that seems fair. Alright, yeah. cool. So, Ascension's the one looking after the wallet. It's, yeah, it's just party, so I'm just being, I'm being party funds, essentially, this game, instead of, because that was Algorov in the other one. Yeah. It's just party funds, essentially. Yeah. Uh, I mean, wouldn't it make more sense for the, um, tag-along guy that's kind of, that's kind of just writing a story to be doing party funds, or the person who you're literally paying to carry your shit for you? Yeah, I want more funds to pay him. <laughs> uh. So, yeah, those are party funds. Uh, you can choose to either, uh, you know, split them among the party. Uh, the guard doesn't particularly give a crap. Uh, the guard's just handing it to you to deal with as you see fit. So, yeah, uh, I'll just write down in case people forget. I'm, gonna keep, I'm still gonna keep my money, so... <laughs> I mean, that's fine. I'm just... It's just if it's a large party thing, I'll just pay for it. Huh. Speaking of, does anyone want to go? Out, does anyone want to go and get those um, those fishes? All oh, right, we were doing that before. Fucking hell, today has been a long one. <laughs> yeah. How about we guys just settle down? We can uh, we can meet up with uh, the granny tomorrow. I mean, we just fought off a Wait. bunch of zombies. Some of us got knocked unconscious. It was it was a lot. How about we take care of ourselves first? The city's still yeah. going to be here tomorrow. That's what I'm saying. We Let's hope so. We should go and have dinner. Okay, I thought you were talking about going for another investigation. Uh, so which oh, inn do you want to go to? Fishes. You remember there was the stall that was selling fishes? I'm not walking halfway across the city to get fish. Fine. Alright, so it looks like uh, this is probably the closest. Um, if you... Just have a little bit of a walk. You'll get there. You'll be able to get uh, to stay at the inn. Uh, it's not a adventurer-specific inn, so it's not going to have any quests there, but it will let you stay for the night, provided that you don't cause too much of a ruckus. So, yeah. It'll let you have some rooms. It'll either let you guys uh, share a room with uh, different beds or all have separate rooms. It'll really depend on what you want. Let's see, I think I uh, set up a chart uh, with payment, where essentially uh, copper equals, um, I think, uh, what was it? Uh, how did I put it? Uh, gold is $100, silver is $10, copper is $1, is how I kind of put it. So that's roughly how I'm going to be figuring out prices for stuff. So basically, that's the equivalent for how I've got it. So basically, you got paid like 900 bucks. Wait, hmm. is that right? Let me no. Let me calculate that. So, uh, ninety times one hundred, no, nine thousand. You guys got paid a shit ton, but also, <laughs> so that will easily make you very comfortable in terms of living expenses, which you will easily be able to cover. Uh, but adventuring stuff tends to be very expensive because being an adventurer is extremely dangerous and also because adventuring items that are useful to you guys are also probably going to be very rare so d 
despite that being a lot of money, it's probably not going to be able to buy you that much in terms of, you know, being an adventurer, especially if you're trying to get it uh, for now. Also, a lot of good adventuring gear is quite rare and difficult to find, so even if you have the money, you still might not be able to do it. In other words, it is a lot of money, but it's not likely to get you very far as an adventurer. Ow. Ow. So anyway, we should probably end the session here since people are struggling to focus. Let's just enjoy ourselves and hang out. So you guys settle in uh, at the inn. Yay! Yay. Let's go uh, see family sharing working. Where they run into, uh, where they randomly run into Gemini, who begins to recount the tale of her day, which will be the start of next session. Oh dear. Uh, first session that was, and. Oh, All right, and. Uh,